we're a bit weary today, and so you might call that a problem. And when a problem mm-hmm. comes along, Sam and Joe, you must rip it. Yeah. <laughs> so this is uh, this is one I've not tried, uh, but uh, it I is. I like the color on it. It is. Uh, it's called a uh, G-Force Grape. Have we, have we have we started already? Is the is this potting? Have our, yes. Yeah. Welcome back. We, uh, we do cold opens now. Yeah. Oh, I, I I wasn't even attempting to be interesting. <laughs> Not but that you, I ever you still were though. <laughs> Hell yeah! So we got uh, Uncle Joey back on uh, on mic three. Joe Rains is with us uh, once again. It's uh, Carter's birthday today, so he's off doing fun girlfriend things on his birthday. So tweet at Carter. Tell him we uh, tell him we miss him and happy birthday. And let us. Rip it! Yeah. All righty. Crack a cold one for Carter. <laughs> yeah. Like whenever Carter can't do the show, the only way I get to hang out with Rivers is if I show up. Oh, that's not <laughs> true. We've been watching zany documentaries recently. It's we have been. It's been the highlight of my month. It's these <laughs> give me a heavy pour. Insane documentaries that are uh, highly recommend. Tickled and um, uh, American movie. No, no. What's the one we, we watched? The cruise. <laughs> The uh, fuck, I'm having a brain fart now. God damn. Oh, oh, the one with the leg. Yes, Finders Keepers. <laughs> Finders Keepers. Highly, highly, <laughs> highly recommend Finders Keepers and Tickled. Those are the best documentaries of all time. And that I will die mm. on that hill. That this has are, a classic uh, grape soda smell. It's, I'm telling you, dude. I there is there. It's not a fluke that it's I. It's a Dimetab. Yeah. Is, <laughs> Dimetab. The flavor is more Dimetab. Yeah, than yeah soda. but it's delicious. Yeah, and there is bad. there is a reason that I have rated Rip It very highly. It is the mm. absolute. For what you get for your value, dollar a can at Dollar Tree, baby, you got to rip it. But is this going to get rid of my uh, <laughs> nagging cough? I don't know. But uh, <laughs> maybe. You might start breathing so hard that uh, stuff comes out. Yeah. Mm. So, yeah, I'm going to put that at five stars. Our, uh, our friend Paul in the UK is keeping track on a spreadsheet of all of the uh, five stars, really. For it's me. It's not for five me stars. You don't think yeah. so? It's No, it, it's, it's overpoweringly sweet. Uh, it's just, bleh. Well, I mean, I like that. Well, this is the it's, fully leaded. This is with sugar. See, it's bad. I mean, you can tell. Yeah. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this would yeah. be bad without it. Uh, I think. Yeah, you think it would this be? This is uh, this is Betus. That's what that is. It's just straight <laughs> Betus. Mm. Yeah. How many grams of sugar are we can? Oh, right? way it's too much. Way too much. Let's see. Joe are we gonna have calories. both our feet when we're done drinking it? <laughs> uh, two hundred calories. All right. That's 50, not that bad. Fifty. How many, how 50, many? How many servings though? I bet that's two servings. <laughs> Fifty-one grams. Uh, amount per serving is uh, one can. So oh, there's. Wow. 51 okay. grams of sugar in this motherfucker. Okay. So that is... Uh, like you're splitting it three ways. Two and fine. a half juices. <laughs> <laughs> so Rivers fucking good. It. I love it. Rivers drinks energy drinks like a depraved alcoholic I drinks I whiskey. Just, <laughs> I just don't understand why energy drinks are... <laughs> are so sugary. Like, I, it's not <laughs> well, necessary. A lot of them aren't, though. I was going to say, there's a I, big market for ones that aren't. Yeah, at all. I've, I've typically on this show gone with the sugar free stuff, but I had already. But s- even so, there it's whatever saccharine oh, or whatever. It's just yeah. like needlessly sweet. It's overwhelming. Yeah, it's yeah. just too much. Well, it's like I don't know. It's just like they've gone after like the uh, like the. Like the goofy fat stepdad yeah. who won't drink coffee. <laughs> You're insulting <laughs> Rivers to say. his face yeah. right now. Well, well, Rivers drink- isn't a Mountain I'm- Dew person, but like uh, these I'm things- drinking coffee too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is like I, I would say, except for Rivers, but like the, the market. This to me seems like Mountain Dew drinkers who hate the taste of coffee. Like that. Oh yeah, well that's energy yeah. drinks as a whole. I think yeah, a lot of the it's ones kind of like a. I don't know. There's ones with like super creatine and whatever people use for pre workout instead yeah. of just like those people are stuff. scary as fuck to me. Like if you're just Shout getting out like to Justin Morales. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> if you're just getting like super just out of your mind, jacked up, ready to go lift some weights, like that's just so intense. I think like if you're trying to build, if you're in a gaining phase, which we often are here. We are, we are from the woods always podcast. gaining. Yeah, so yeah. this is the house of gains. I'm gonna I'm <laughs> Chris gonna, gains. I'm gonna go hike later so my gains won't make Make me buy new pants. That's oh yeah, sure. Yeah. That's uh, good. 
Um, but uh, yeah, that was that was ripping. I uh, I've been waiting a while too. I got still got one more. I got one called uh, Adam Palm as well mm-hmm. coming up uh, mm-hmm. in the ripping category. But that is G Force extra strong because of the G Force. I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. Or does it's that just, just mean extra sugar? Yeah, <laughs> I got Rip It to respond to me on Twitter. Nuh-uh. I did. Uh, I mean, how many how many mentions is Rip It? None. Getting? That's why I'm trying yeah. to corner this market because basically I was like, uh, you know, I feel like. Uh, uh, oh, that's why you said it's five stars. Huh? We gotta start. We gotta start saying all these are five yeah. stars from now on. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I've I've openly shit on uh, uh, Celsius, and they've liked some of my tweets where I'm shitting on them. Mm-hmm. So you know, uh, when I'm having enough sugar to make myself want to vomit. <laughs> It's Rip It. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was saying something nice about them, and I said, Rip It should pay me a million dollars for this content. Mm-hmm. And uh, and then uh, somebody was like, well, if you can get them to like it, that'd be one thing. And then they fucking gave us a heart and responded and was like, we'll give you a heart, but not a million dollars. And I was like, oh, motherfuckers. Nice. Greedy. We'll get Greedy. you. We'll get you. We know you got that ICP money. Speaking of which, Jeff in Louisiana sent me this. I don't think this has been made anymore. I'm pretty sure this video is about 13 years old. Uh, but uh, this this would be a uh, an interesting thing to try. If we could find this on eBay and drink a 13 year old energy drink, that might be the best way to mm-hmm. uh, you know conclude this bit. Yeah, there might be a YouTube video. <laughs> it's it's gonna spreading. kill you, right? Spreading. All new fucking freaky frosty fucking energy drink from the insane club boss. Get him, get him one, get him lit. Wet spot! Available at Hot Topic. Wow, it's sold at Hot Topic. Is that sped up, or did they want it to sound like Oh, that? no, man. It's, it's Psychopathic Records, man. That's just that's, how it sounds. That's how you sound when you're tweaking. Yeah, Alpha. dude. What is it? I already forgot the name. Spazmatic. That's how, that's how bad of a commercial it was. I instantly <laughs> forgot the product. Oh, yeah. That's uh, that's Spasmatic from Psychopathic I Records. I wonder how many bad celebrity energy drink endorsements there are. I just saw it's not got to be more than that. It's it's not an energy drink, but I did see a billboard for Indago, which is uh, Snoop Dogg's uh, vodka, I think. Oh, yeah. Good so. for him. Branching out. Yeah. A lot of people have <laughs> diversing. <alcohol>. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cabo have you ever had uh, Dan Aykroyd's uh, Crystal Skull Vodka? Crystal Skull Vodka? No, I haven't. Oh, yeah. I heard it's bad, though. <laughs> it tastes like vodka. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> they have a lot of uh, celebrity owned E40. Has the hur- slurricane. And he has the ramen noodles I ate last night. <laughs> mm-hmm. How are those? <laughs> They're all cor- cardboardy. Like I said, the, mm-hmm. those wrap snacks, uh, ramen noodles are... Uh, you got to cook them not in the cardboard. Put it, put it in like a bowl. Oh, yeah. that's interesting. Okay. Okay. I might try that. I've got one. I think I got one Master P creamy chicken gumbo left. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So that might be. Do you the way think to they do it. Bet they tried that before they took like gave them their name or like it was no, like sure I don't give a fuck. Do <laughs> no, whatever. I think all of the wrap snacks ramen noodles they ever made they made in 2016 and and I'm just eating. No, because <laughs> these are brand. One. These ones just dropped. Oh really? I think so. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Because I don't think they used to make ramen. Yeah. I think at this point, if you just get offered a wrap snack, you should take it because it makes you a legend yeah. instantly. Yeah. If you can go into a store and buy a product with your face on it yeah that's just cool it is cool i like the chips i like the cardi b the yeah. the honey uh the honey jerk barbecue whatever There's chips the, i think little the, yachty uh, ones the, the migos the sour- lady gaga oreos were good oh what were those i didn't see those it was just different i must i mean it tasted the flavor it was a flavored oreo i mean it was, it was just icing it was it was good the what flavor good. <laughs> pink pink okay pink. Mm-hmm. yeah i mean it was like yeah <laughs> all right I have a fun thing. This is from uh, Windsor, Ontario, which is the Canadian city directly across the bridge from Detroit. A Windsor, Ontario health and wellness business has posted a sign informing customers that they will not be allowed to enter the store if they have received COVID-19 vaccines. Uh, The store also has a big no more lockdown sign and also curiously a tinfoil on all of the windows, but like not a solid wall of tinfoil, just select patches as if they're trying to, you know, I guess, avoid someone taking pictures of the business or something. Like, it's very strange. What do you mean, like, it's not totally blanked out? No, just giant, randomly placed pieces of tinfoil on the thing. Maybe they're trying, I mean, you would use tinfoil to keep the light out, so maybe that's like where they sleep. 
Yeah, no, but they're the maybe. there's porn. Or maybe, maybe they're on drugs and they're oh, just yeah, like yeah. specifically to keep out. How about the government mind control? That's what it is. Yeah, I mean, it's a, I'm glad Canada has those too, though. Well, that's why I read these stories because you know it's easy to feel bad about America, and then you read other places and you're like, yeah, you guys are stupid as hell too. Uh, Does Canada have a Florida? Is there a part of Canada where all the weird shit happens? Probably. Yeah. Oh, I mean. Vancouver, I mean, maybe I don't know. They have that in every country. Yeah, they definitely have it in every country. I'm trying to think what would be. We uh, don't we've know. we've got Canadian listeners. That's that's the better way to do this. We, I know we got lots of listeners in Canada. Please tweet at us. What is Canada's Florida? We need to know. I know Alberta is their Texas because it's basically just a giant prairie with a bunch of oil. So it's like you know cowboy guys out there in Alberta. But I don't know what y'all's Florida. That's a great question. Hmm. Anyway, uh, Tony Pantaloresco owner of herb plus Breadworks in ottawa on ottawa street posted the sign on the front door of his business stating so it says please note that to ensure the safety of our employees and existing clients the shop is not allowing in anyone who has taken the experimental vaccines that include moderna astrazeneca pfizer johnson and johnson or any new prototype of the innovative injectables due to the nature of synthetic dna the injectables that's what that's what my next movie is going to be called the injectables <laughs> it says due to the nature of synthetic dna i like that so he thinks it's you know that vaccines are turning people into mutants well if he's going on that isn't the moderna one where it's not it's like rna or something no they're all rna oh, there's no RNA. dna situation happening at all uh the decision was made in consultation with our insurance company who will not take any liability or claim regarding these experimentals and with health experts the experiment or the unknown health effects of the mrna vaccines are not our responsibility we have also taken into account the reported side effects such as viral excretion seizure and death we apologize if this has caused any inconvenience and we will reevaluate our policy once the clinical trials of the experimental injections are completed in 2023. Thank you. Herbs plus breadworks. It's uh, breadworks. Yeah, that's their. I guess they make bread too. But uh, what, are, what? What is their main thing if it's not bread? I, I think it's like a uh, wellness. You know, it's where you go in and get like sage vitamins. and the fucking witch hazel and vitamins wow. and you know wow. her herbal healing holistic herbal well, i mean healing. if you're going to one of those places I, you gotta expect that like, <laughs> exactly I mean, it's like going to it's like going, going to la and getting crystals and being like of course they won't ask me what my sign is <laughs> <laughs> i mean like you just gotta understand that's <laughs> part of the gang i i underst- honestly when i see like one of those crystal shops and they don't sell bongs i'm just like what the fuck are you doing like you <laughs> should be selling bongs made of crystals yeah like, bong honestly. shops sell fucking everything yeah so like yeah you can buy a taser <laughs> can you smoke out of the taser i mean oh. you could zap your friend after you get high yeah that might be fun that's pretty funny <laughs> In just a moment here, we're actually going to be uh, speaking to uh, an educator uh, who is uh, going to call in and uh, talk about our angry teacher question, but I figure I'll uh, throw it to Joe first before we uh, talk to Rob. Joe, we've been asking people, what is the maddest that you've ever made a teacher or seen a teacher get? I mean, I, in sixth grade, I did this, and then like in tenth grade, I saw somebody do this, where like the teacher's ranting, and you just can't take anymore, so you just put your head down and go, "Shut up!" <laughs> uh, Whoa, I've never heard of that. I was gonna one. say that's awesome. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I mean, I guess I don't know. I, the, I went to Alabaster sc- schools when they were like shitty. So there was like a lot of teachers who were just angry all the time. Uh-huh. And then they would start ranting. I've done it. I saw another student what do it. What were they ranting about? <laughs> just anything. Like this, just like bitching about maybe how the tests were too bad or, or how anything. Just and literally anything. And they would just start ranting. And then I've done it. I saw other people do it. When I saw other people do it, I was like, oh, you have no idea how much trouble you're about to get in. <laughs> uh, like you get, you know, in school suspension for like two weeks for that. And then they like want you to thank them for not like sending you like expelling you or some crazy shit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think one time I thought I was like friendly going back and forth with a coach who was teaching biology. Uh-huh. Uh, and like he up, up front was like, man, I don't know why they're having me teach this. It's my degree, but I'm like a coach, y'all. So we'll get, <laughs> we'll get through this together. And I'm just going to read the next couple of chapters before we get to it. So, uh, Anyways, I thought we were like friendly b- busting each other's balls. And one time I said something innocuous and he got super pissed off. And that's when <laughs> I realized we weren't friends. He just genuinely always hated me. Uh, <laughs> it wasn't like a, a back and forth. He just genuinely did not like me. Uh, what did you say to piss him off? 
Literally, I don't even remember. It was like one of those situations where you bust each other's balls, and mm-hmm. I just thought that was what we did. And I was like, oh, Coach, what was his name? Perkins? Coach Perkins oh, or something? perfect. Perfect name. Yeah, I, he was just, I thought we were had one of those things, and he, uh, as it turns out, we did not. What did, what did he tell you? <laughs> he just stared at He did that thing where, like, I'm a grown alpha male, and I'm going to stare at you till you understand I could murder you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He, like, like, for easily two minutes just stared at me. Uh, <laughs> wow. I think uh, when I was in 10th grade, we had a, a teacher who was a member at my dad's church, uh-huh. and I, I did not like her. Uh, <laughs> and she told us we couldn't get in trouble for what we wrote in our journals. And, and so it, <laughs> oh. she was also another teacher who would just yell at us for like 15 minutes. Sure. And uh, she was like, I don't want to get ugly. And it like popped out where I was just like, too late. Uh, <laughs> and so she got, she got really mad about that. So then she like went through my journal, I guess, just to find the things that would get me in trouble. Yeah, yeah. And there was literally nothing bad in there except for like two posts where I just went through this, a thesaurus and just like basically just talked about how much I hated her in big words <laughs> <laughs> just, just to see what would happen. I was like, we'll see. Uh, and so this like, I don't know why I thought I'd get away with it because the, the words were big, but right. like, it was, I mean, <laughs> you, you thought she wouldn't even She'd understand. Be impressed. I, I don't know. It was just a fucking word salad that was yeah. basically equated. Hey, fuck you. Uh, <laughs> and then my dad made me write like a four page handwritten apology. And then like, it was bad. <laughs> it's it was weird when so you're bad. forced to apologize for something you don't don't give a shit about at all. Yeah, yeah, well, my dad was one of those dads where it's like he got the shit beat out of him as a kid, so he was not into like being right physical at all. Like yeah, that was yeah. not gonna happen. But he was super into sitting you down at the kitchen table and telling you you were a piece of shit for like three hours. Damn. So that was that was his go to. Like, oh, just kick my ass. Man. Yeah. So like <laughs> the the easiest and quickest way to piss him off would be to like make him look bad to a church congregant member. Oh, that sure. was yeah. like instant like you're in deep shit so yeah that was like two months of him like barely talking to me he was so mad oh was he, <laughs> that you didn't like your teacher what that it was church it was somebody in the church yeah. that like you know pro- he was like and she never came back and i was like it's not like she can't be christian anymore dad like she can go to another church <laughs> <laughs> that rules that you drove her off i mean it was it wasn't like anything problematic it was just like saying she smelled in a really yeah i get it way. i didn't think it was problematic yeah he would he, he is she like this is so a... disrespectful she is a teacher she is an adult yeah. she should be deserves your respect and this is how you show yourself blah 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 Sounds like she, <laughs> yeah she was just a cry baby Calling in now from Santa Rosa, California. He is the purveyor and proprietor of a fantastic YouTube channel all about gaming and math called Gaming Mathematically. You can also find him at his website, ProfessorCunningham.com. And he's also an educator who is going to weigh in on this uh, discussion about angry teachers. It is our friend Rob. What's going on, Rob? How are you? Hi, I'm doing pretty well. How are you all doing? Uh, We're doing good. So uh, Rob uh, tweeted at us a couple about a month ago. Uh, so we've been really excited to have him on the show. Uh, and uh, Rob works uh, as an educator. And you told me I want you to talk about, first of all, your uh, LARPing uh, club that you uh, you started at the school. Yes, of course. I had a feeling that was going to be the first thing to come up. Absolutely. Um, as, a, as, a, as a minor note, uh, I am a currently unemployed math teacher. OK, so, well, hey, uh, if- looking been looking for that job. I've been unemployed all COVID, unfortunately. Oh well. Well, if anyone's if anyone's hiring, uh, we we Joe got... was saying he needs to get tutored in math. Or <laughs> <laughs> it would I be am, rough. I am throwing out applications both in the Bay Area and down in Southern California. So oh, some, nice. someone's someone's going to pick me up sooner or later. Absolutely. Well, uh, yeah, I, uh, I I'm very interested to hear about the uh, the LARP yes. club to start. Yes. With. Now, to start with, I want to, I want to make it very clear that it wasn't originally my idea. Um, so I am, as you may or may not have noticed from the surroundings, a gigantic dork. Uh-huh. And um, I, I share my dorkdom with my students very early um, as a way of sort of letting them see who I am as a human being and, and uh, connecting with them in that way. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's great. That's uh, all, pretty much all of my favorite teachers had that, uh, had that in common. <laughs> And I love role-playing games. I play Dungeons and Dragons. I play different kinds of live-action role-play, so LARP games. Uh, some of them just involve standing around and having conversations, you know, with snide people. And Holy some of them, well, good, no, good people, <laughs> good people playing snide characters. Okay. Um, 
That's uh, but, that's uh, pretty much stand up comedy. What you're describing. <laughs> yes, uh, except more. Yeah, and and we are both the performers and the audience. It's a lot of fun. But what we're talking about here is a different kind of LARP in which you use foam and plastic to build two very exacting safety standards. <laughs> Foam weapons, which you use to beat the ever-loving hell out of each other. Oh, hell yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have a, one of my best friends from childhood does the, the medieval thing where they put the armor on and beat each other with bamboo sticks. Oh, This is not quite that <laughs> hardcore. Yeah, this is... I just learned what LARPing is. I thought LARPing was the guys with the foam sticks. I didn't realize it meant live action role play. Live action role play, oh, yeah. Right. I'm stupid, sorry. <laughs> There is there is an argument to be made that like uh, Civil War reenactors are LARPers. Sure, there's, uh, yeah, yeah. Although it's more scripted. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe the uh, community should weigh in on that one. Yeah, yeah, perhaps. But you, you would be building, like, what what sort of, uh, you know, scenarios would you be creating? Is this more, so, like, video game based or anime based or uh, or what is it? This this game, we, we kind of sort of had, the, the role play aspect of this particular club wasn't very uh, big. We mostly just made weapons and engaged in games where we would primarily beat each other up with these uh, with these weapons, these uh, these boffer weapons. Uh -huh. And uh, yeah, sometimes it would be something as simple as capture the flag or just line up and beat each other down or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> now, That's my favorite game is uh, yeah. line well, up and beat one of the, each other down. One of the warm up games that we have is we would like line up uh, across from each other and uh, we would just sort of do a little four on four fight between whoever was in the club. And uh whoever lost the side that lost would end up gaining a um gaining a person from the other team making their team a little bit bigger and they would do it again and it was it was mostly an athletic activity when it really comes down to it we did all of the safety things we had them sign waivers and all that other stuff yeah yeah you can't sue how me do for you, hitting your head your, how do you lose you can't sue me for hitting your kid in the head with a final fantasy 7 sword <laughs> yes and i had one of those by the way i, <laughs> I was just this, i knew you did i somehow I did. we've you know we've just chatted just, on twitter this is the first time i've ever talked to you in person but <laughs> somehow i feel figured a Final Fantasy gigantic sword was involved. Yeah, it, it, it was not a practical weapon, but it was a lot of fun to use. <laughs> Uh, it was one of the safest weapons too because it had so much foam. Yeah, I was gonna say it's like eight feet tall and it's just it's gigantic and huge. Is this like that movie uh, Role Models? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah Role yeah, Models. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, with yeah. Uh, with McLovin and uh, sh the the guy with the teeth there, Sean William Scott. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Stifler, Stifler. <laughs> uh, but yeah, what were you gonna ask, Sam? How do you lose the game? Ah. Um, that depends on the game, but usually it was like if you get hit in the arm, you kind of put your arm behind your back and you oh, only have your other hand to use. Oh, so I'm sure obviously that had to have led to some Monty Python Black Knight situations yes, where somebody's absolutely. on their foot talking shit. <laughs> absolutely. And yeah, if you get hit in the leg, like you go down on one knee and kind of shuffle around or roll around like you're in uh, like you're in. Uh, <laughs> Katamari Damasi, huh? No, Did I not, do it. I was... <laughs> No, you Dragon didn't. Souls or Dark Souls. What the hell am I thinking? <laughs> Dark Souls. The most well-known video game ever, and I flubbed the name. Well done, me. Oh, well, <laughs> hey, don't feel too bad. This is my first hearing of it. So Fair enough. <laughs> um, well, uh, what, what did, did you have any... Uh, I mean... Obviously, like you're, you know, even though it's foam and you're, but you're still, you're still hitting people. I mean, even I, I remember, you know, I, I don't, I've never done any LARPing, especially with like, you know, big foam weapons, but anytime there was any Red Rover come over or, uh, you know, any of those type of situations, any sort of physical fucking game that happens outside of school, you know, feelings will flare up in those situations. Did you just have anybody just get fucking pissed and just start wailing on someone? I had people get pissed, but they knew how to walk away when they got pissed. Um, there was one one kid, and this is so unfortunate. This poor kid got hit in the crotch <laughs> accidentally mm -hmm. every single time we met. <laughs> <laughs> Without without fail, nobody was doing it on purpose. It was <laughs> it was just random nonsense. And it, yeah, eventually he got pretty pissed about it, and and we all tried sort of made sure to to only aim for like the arms 
for quite some time after that. <laughs> I mean, if it happened every time, I would definitely do it. Yeah, I mean, if it happened every time, I would. That kid would just become known as Balls. Yeah, I would just like, say here comes Balls. balls. So I'm so, in, I would, I'd be like, accident. <laughs> sorry, not really. Though. Intentionally hitting the head or or the crotch is is indeed a, a good way to get yourself thrown off the field. Oh, okay. Well, uh, you can't chop their head off. <laughs> no, no. The oh, shoulder. Dear. If you hit like in the shoulder, I'm of course gesturing like your your listeners can hear. Um, if you get hit in the shoulder, it kind of counts as getting your head cut off, but you don't want to get hit in the face. Um, uh, okay, yeah. if you're kicking unless, them off the unless, field, though, do you <laughs> chop their head off? <laughs> not, in a, not in a high school thing, I think. I Maybe maybe there are <laughs> others that are willing to do headshots, but uh, yeah, not, you, not with not with teenagers. <laughs> yeah, if you, if you go up to intramural LARPing in college, then... <laughs> what if you're, like, in trouble? Can they chop your head off as, like, you know, you're in, you're in trouble, you're, <laughs> yeah, you're, you're gone surrounded. for two weeks, we're gonna chop your head off, <laughs> like, get on your knees, you know, like in the Three Musketeers, where he chops that we lady's would, head off. We would troll each other sometimes by... You know, setting up games specifically to, you know, I don't know, play to someone's weakness just to mess with them. Sure. But it wasn't anything big. And we were always it, we were always very like upbeat and positive with each other. That was sort of the best part of all of it. You know, some people really got into the my name is Maximus kind of thing. Uh-huh. And I loved that. And some people <laughs> just wanted to beat people with foam. And I was awesome with that, too. Yeah. And it was all them. Like it was all the students who wanted to put together the club. And right. I said, I will be the advisor, but you all got to do all the paperwork. Yeah. Well, I was about to say, it was funny that you mentioned that all, pretty much all the kids had enough, you know, kind of emotional intelligence to just kind of walk away if they got mad or whatever. So I'm honestly, I'm thinking all the wrong kids were maybe in this club. I think you need to bring this to, you know, maybe more <laughs> troubled like school where there's more, you know, crying. Uh, we want, we want tears. We want, we want fat <laughs> yeah, kids this crying. Was not- well, no, no, the- it's, it's a good way to maybe uh, to maybe teach those lessons of, uh, you know, being able to take your anger and, uh, you know, not uh, not lash out at people, even though you're in your right to, I guess, as the owner of a Final Fantasy seven sword. <laughs> <laughs> it is difficult to be um, it's difficult to lash out at somebody when you are tired from all of the um, all of the, the fun you, or fun and running around you've been doing. Yeah, well, I was going to ask you, you were the advisor for this. Were there any other teachers involved or was it just you? And do I wish yeah. you can imagine you can imagine the kind of jokes that I got um, around the uh, the break room. Right. Sure. Like sure. The fact that I, a teacher, um, am able to with, you know, permission of the school, <laughs> make weapons and beat students with them. And every time, every time they made a, 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 a joke like that, I would say you are absolutely 100 percent welcome to come out on the field and test to see if that's what it's like. Right, right. Oh man, nobody I, ever took me up on it, not once. Man, I, 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 I you're threatening to fight him. <laughs> I was like, I won't. I won't even participate. I'll step back and let and let uh, let them do what they do. Yeah, yeah. I'll, they, I'll, got, I'll, they got really good by the end of the school year. Like they were beating me. You know. 50 50 wow. by the time by the time we got to the end of the first school year yeah they picked it up really fast yeah i would love it it's like the shitty coach from the <laughs> PE school it's like hey i'm gonna let balls wail on you just get ready um who would have guessed teenagers could pick up weaponry so well? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um well yeah let's uh you know let's let's move a little bit into the uh into the classroom and uh talk about because we've been exploring this concept you know from the student side of the uh of the equation and obviously i'm gonna yeah. ask you about that too but but, you know, in your experience, uh, you know, maybe talk about sometimes, uh, you know, whatever you whatever you can talk about uh, that uh, maybe you got uh, maybe got a little little too heated in the classroom if you ever did or if you know of someone at your school that that happened to. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, um, I don't know exactly what happened here, so I can't spill all of the tea. But when I was working um, at my old high school, actually, the one I graduated from, which was an interesting experience. Oh, I've been there. Um, I've been there, dude. I did. I subbed, I subbed at my old high school and it was fucking oh yeah? weird. Yeah, It's surreal, especially once you have former teachers as co-workers and you're referring them by their first names and it's. Oh yeah, you, the, you get used to it, but oh, I well, see, I was a sub, so I wasn't there enough to get used to it. Of just walking into like you know the break room and just being like, "Oh, what's up, Miss Rasa? How are you?" Like just having my old teachers in there. But at one point during uh, during the school year, like early on, day one, day two, uh, for reasons that I don't know, a teacher just up and walked out of the classroom. Uh, a chemistry teacher just up and walked out of the classroom and quit on the spot. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> Hell yeah. Oh, well. And and it gets worse because someone had to take those those classes 
And because they were both a uh, math and a science teacher, I got to, not got to, I did volunteer for this and I got paid very well for it, but I got a 120% um, contract for a year Whoa. where I taught six six periods in a row with no prep. It was oh my God. exhausting. Jesus. Wow. So you, so you know. You never That's, figured out why they walked off the job, though. No, I I chased rumors and nothing. Well, nothing did, was did you ever take, found. Did you take over that? You took over that class, though, right? No, no. Oh, I, okay. I, they all kind of the students all kind of had their schedules reshuffled. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's just for, like, for, <laughs> the office is like, hey, kids, you're not learning oh, about yeah, science no, this was, year. <laughs> for a while, I had I think sixty students in my classroom. Oh my God. Just Lord. for a couple of, for like a week, a week and a half. Yeah. It was, it was bizarre. I've, I had to have standing room only class math class. That's, that's wow. If I had to take math standing up, dude, I would have been so pissed off. Yeah. I would have been <laughs> like, I, <laughs> yeah. As the guy who tends to stand up when I teach, I totally get it. Yeah. I was, that said though, we're, that we're, said though, <laughs> I do think it's important to allow students who uh, can't sit still or don't want to sit still. If there is space in the back of the classroom, I totally let them roam if they want. Yeah. Yeah. I've told this story on the show, but one of my math classes, there was a football player, just like a giant dude who just wouldn't sit in his desk. He would lay on a table like a fucking Greek Adonis in the back and then just, Oh my God. And then just you're describing and he would you're describing me and he would flip, <laughs> he'd flip the light. He'd always wear shower shoes and he would just, and you'd see his, feet and shit and he would flip the lights on and off and stuff sometimes he'd be like sorry miss regal just just a fucking uh fantastic that was senior year i used to take uh four because i was in i was in calculus uh senior year and there weren't a whole lot of people in that class so i would take four desks and maneuver them together uh-huh. and i would just take up as much space as i wanted yeah it was nice oh man these these lax california schools they would they would take me <laughs> out to the woods and beat me in alabama if i did that yeah we didn't have the room for that sort of thing <laughs> right right unless i was Tech. a football also, player <laughs> like i feel like we, we, and when we were kids like the eccentric kids were just bullied by the other students and the teachers so if you were like over over there trying to take up space everybody be like hey stop being weird yeah, like, oh, yeah. yeah unless definitely. like i said unless you're like one of the stars of the football team and they're like oh that's just old jason <laughs> nah that wouldn't fly my, in my, my school senior year most people don't really give a damn anymore about what other people are saying about them yeah. oh yeah sure least, yeah that was at least that was my experience <laughs> maybe that was just me yeah um well, uh, yeah, and I guess you know we'll we'll go back and ask you you know about uh, when when you were in school. What are what are your uh, memories of that as far as uh, pissing off teachers and how how do you? Uh, because I'll tell you this: like when I did uh, substitute, one of the things that I figured out on literally on day one was like, oh, this is war. Like this is not uh, you know the, at least when you're a sub, it's not some environment that you can really uh, you know affect in any way. It is just like here here it comes and you kind of realize like all of the teachers that you probably perceived as mean and stuff like that were just people that just didn't know how to handle this, you know, kind of crazy situation. So you just kind of do whatever you can. So yeah. like I ended up subbing for a teacher who I, uh, I never had her, but she was like notoriously one of like the, the toughest kind of teachers ever. And everybody was like, Oh, you know, everybody was kind of scared of miss Ross. Like, Oh, if you get miss Ross's math class, like, you know, she's, she's really mean and stuff like that. And then I like ended up subbing for her math class. I was like, yep, I get it now. <laughs> like, <laughs> just like I, I made amends in my head with every teacher I'd ever have had like a, a problem with because I'm like, yeah, I kind of, I kind of get this. This is, uh, this is kind of, uh, this kind of feels like you're at war with a bunch of uh, <laughs> small people. <laughs> there is a little bit of that on the other side as well, um, though, because there are teachers who approach like it's a war, yeah. and of course, then the student, or like they're a cop, right? And the students right. will then, and then the students will then respond as though they are. I mean. You, you fuck you. I'm not, you're, I'm not gonna do what you tell me. You exactly. Know? Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and it made me. I, I get that. It, it totally made me appreciate the teachers that I did have because, uh, you know, specifically in high school, I had two English teachers in particular who were like the coolest people ever. And you know, like I ended up taking like the AP English in 11th and 12th grade. And for both of those, like both of those teachers in particular were just like I, I'd consider the gold standard as far as you know. But then you'd go into some other class, and it just could not have been any 
you know, more different if it wanted to be just a complete 180 where you'd be in this one class, like, you know, kind of talking about, uh, like I remember, uh, my, my teacher, Mr. Jones, uh, was really big into the real world, which was happening Mr. at the time. Jones and me. Exactly. Sorry. And we would come in and he would be able to, you know, he was one of those teachers that was able to like break down about how, uh, you know, Coral's behavior on the real world was, uh, was not that sim- dissimilar from, uh, Daisy and the great Gatsby or that something like that. That was a like good that. season too. Oh that was, yeah. Uh, yeah. Coral was out of her fucking yeah, mind. that was a good year. Um, <laughs> but so you'd have a teacher like that, and then you'd go to you know some math class where it's just somebody screaming like a psycho at everybody, and you're like, okay, this is this is really up to you know. It takes a very special kind of individual. But do do you have any uh, uh, any stories from when you were a student? Yeah, I mean, I had all kinds of different teachers. Um, the teacher that actually inspired me to be a teacher was like me seen to be more lax in his like classroom discipline. Like he let people do things like pull tests desks together. Yeah. Um, but he also had very, very, very high standards. Yes. And he gave a lot of support to students trying to meet those standards. And he did not have any time for students who were not interested in meeting those standards. Yeah. That's, now, that's actually, uh, that, I would say that about my, uh, the two teachers I mentioned as well. Yeah. Very high standards to, and they, and they conducted their class in a way that if you didn't do very well, you felt like you were disappointing them. On some level, you're like, I respect these guys so much that I want to do well. Classroom discipline and respect, both in the classroom and in general, does not come from being authoritarian, right? It does not come from having a bunch of rules and exacting punishments on students who disobey those rules. It comes from getting to know your students and actually connecting with them as people and establishing mutual respect. I know it's not super funny, but that's 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 the secret. That's it. That's all of it. That's the secret. Yeah. Yeah. Get to know the students like they're actually, you know, people. Like whole people <laughs> with uh-huh. thoughts and feelings and hopes and dreams. And like, instead of, you know, instead of being a lot of school districts treat students like statistics, right? They, they yeah. gather every year and, and look at all the numbers and are only interested in the numbers. And it's just, no, just treat your students like they are whole individual people. Yeah. So did you have anyone freak out on you when you were a kid? <laughs> um, I did. I did. I had a teacher whose name I'm not going to say. I had her twice. And, um, <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure we were the um, the final cascading event to her retirement. We all have uh, <laughs> we all have stories like that, right? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Um, I had one teacher who was a biology teacher, uh, sophomore year, and he did not teach us one piece of biology for the entire first of, or first semester. Hell yeah. <laughs> He taught us like philosophy 101, ethics and value theory, packing your own parachute, shit like that. Am I allowed to swear? (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay, just making sure. Yeah, we're we're not on terrestrial yet. Um, But uh, when we finally called him on it, he got just so mad. Yeah. And (laughs) he turned, he he was bald and he turned very, very like beet red (laughs) and started ranting at us about how important ethics and philosophy are in the field of biology and in science in general. And he made a lot of good points, but he made them in a very red and sweaty way. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So I bet, but I, you know, that's, I guess the, the fact that he was, uh, you know, on his way to retirement, that probably worked out good for everybody. He was not on his way to retirement. He ended up being the athletic director for several years after that. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, it, maybe that was the job he really wanted all along. <laughs> Who knows? Um, well, uh, before we let you go, I was just going to ask, uh, you know, if you got any uh, any pandemic stories to share since uh, since we are uh, hopefully reaching some sort of uh, crescendo or end on this uh, on this whole pandemic thing. We'll I like did to get you on the to, record. I did manage to get my Johnson and Johnson shot just ahead of the pause. Oh, so I'm pretty yeah. happy about that. Congrats. Yep. One and done. Very nice. I hope that they are able to find out uh, how dangerous or not dangerous it is and unpause it soon. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I ended up, I saw like people keep reporting shit where they're like, oh, there's been uh, 6,000 negative reactions to vaccines out of 75 million. Yeah. And also, what is negative reaction? Well, but mean? That, uh, just, you know, uh, or, of, I got a rash. Yeah, I got a rash. Well, well, who, or give, who gives a shit about a rash? Exactly. You're not going to die now. Shut up. Well, and they were also saying that there's been like, you know, a couple of things where somebody's gotten COVID, even though they had a vaccine. But that number is still at like point zero zero eight, yes. which is way better. Yeah, and I'm sure it was like a much better weaker version or weaker uh, exactly. conditions than it's, it would be if they had 
gotten it's gotten one of vaccine. those things where you're just like, shut the fuck up, dude. <laughs> like yeah. you're making people people are too panicky as it is. My God. There's for, a reason for what it's worth. There's for a, what it's worth. As as a math teacher, I'm not a I'm not a medical expert, but I have looked at the studies on on these vaccines safety. And I, as a high school math teacher, yeah. so speaking with all of that authority, yeah. um, am am convinced that they are safe and you should absolutely go get your goddamn vaccination if you haven't. If one person listening to this was not thinking about getting it and goes and gets it, yeah. I will be a happy person. Yeah. The math is there. The numbers are there. Get the damn vaccination. Yeah. I mean, if you live in L.A., uh, you know, there, there might be a train leaving for Bakersfield on the 26th. So <laughs> That's right. Hit me up. We'll go to Baco. Well, so be... I don't have a ton of stories when it comes to uh, I live by myself and I don't interact with anybody. But instead of a wild covid story, I have. Oh, boy. From my local grocery <laughs> store. <laughs> Hell yes. An, an energy drink that I would like to share oh, with my new friends. Please, please. What, what yeah. color is that? <laughs> oh. This is this is a deep purple, like like the color the Undertaker, the wrestler. Wore. Yeah. Oh, nice. Hell yeah. Sambazon. <laughs> It's called Sambazon, and it's got a picture of some kind of white mask on the front. Oh, it's like supposed to be a Brazilian thing, I guess. Uh, it like says, a... it says, organic jungle love, Aikai Berry. I don't know how to pronounce that. <laughs> jungle love. <Passion fruit. laughs> Amazon Energy Registered Trademark, antioxidant rich energy drink. I would like each of you to please guess how many times the word organic oh. is printed <laughs> on this can. Dude, Seven. <laughs> Yeah, I was More. also going to say... Uh, More? Uh, I'm going to go 17, just to be fun. You are almost exactly right. 16 times wow. on this wow. on this can. <laughs> the word organic. Most of them are in the ingredients. Do we have a moment? Oh, yeah. yeah. Hit me. Hit me. So here are the ingredients. Get ready for the most pretentious list you've ever heard <laughs> in your life. <laughs> ingredients. Sparkling filtered water. Organic invert cane syrup. What? <laughs> What does that mean? They hang it up I in have a no smoke idea. house? Organic, <laughs> organic fair trade clarified Aikai juice. Jesus. <laughs> organic acerola juice. Acerola juice. A C E R O L A. And just to clarify, you're in the Bay Area, correct? Um, yes, of course I am. <laughs> I'm up in Sonoma County. The the absolute, just most pretentious of pretentious. Yes, uh, we are Wine County. We are talking, this is from one of our organic Wine County yes. corner stores. Friends. Uh, it's so funny because ours today, we you're did. You're not going to find this at a Trader Joe's. We, we did, Actually, you might. We did Rip It today, which is from the Dollar Tree. So we, we've Nice. Pretty much the exact, uh, you know, town town mouse, country mouse uh, energy drink situation happening. Uh, organic passion fruit juice, organic Ooh. and natural flavors, citric acid, organic green tea extract, <laughs> organic guarana extract, fruit and vegetable juice for color in parentheses. Okay. <laughs> organic yerba mate extract oh. made from organic concentrate with filtered water. Added. I that is that okay. is why is the, the fruit juice for color? <laughs> it, well, because it probably I has a dis know. it probably has a disgusting color otherwise, and they got to put po pomegranate juice or something to make it red or whatever. What's, what's the nose like? Oh yeah, what's the what's the smell? It's <laughs> it's mostly it's mostly the I don't even know what that taste is. Okay, so it starts out nice. It does start out nice. The the, 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 the flavors actually blend really well. But then it gets really bad really fast and stays that way. Uh, How's yeah. your tummy? How's the tummy? Only only the one aftertaste, not three. Not, but, no, uh, no three aftertaste. <laughs> that's, it makes but sense, it, it lingers. That's how it a lot lingers. of them so, go. You have to drink yeah, more can, to get it out of your mouth. <laughs> it's, it's literally like you get the carbonation and then the taste of the juice, and then <laughs> the, there's the guarana extract hitting you in the back of the tongue. Oh, uh, okay. yeah, yeah. Well, tell, tell our man Paul in the UK who's making our spreadsheets, uh, what, what do you give this uh, five uh, out of five stars? Out of five stars, let's see. It says it's like two point five shots of espresso. You know, it's actually pretty pleasant for that. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it four stars. Oh wow! All right, you hear that, Paul? But, but <laughs> it's gonna give itself seventeen stars for for pretension. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Well, uh, Rob, this has been a blast talking to you, man. We'll have to do this again. Uh, please tell people where they can find you online. Absolutely. I am on Twitch and Twitter at Math Demigod. You can find me on YouTube by going to Professor-Cunningham.com. And um, 
Also, if you would like to support a uh, struggling unemployed educator who's trying to make math videos uh, more accessible for people, uh, you can find me at patreon.com slash math demigod as well. Hell yeah, nice. that's awesome. And if anybody is a school administrator listening, we got a we got a solid teacher here, man. Get it? Let's get this guy behind a chalkboard. I'll land somewhere. I'll land somewhere. It'll be fine. Hell It'll yeah. Be fine. Uh, fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, cool, man. Well, thanks again for talking to us, and uh, we'll do this again soon. Absolutely. Great to talk to you guys. Take care, friends. All All right. Later. Peace. All right. That is uh, Rob up in Santa Rosa. That was Damn. fun. Yeah. Talking to a real teacher. I wish I could do math in any in oh, any I'm way. I'm so bad at it's it. It's not like a. It's just not real. I don't, I don't like it. <laughs> it's it's too fucking up. hard. It and up. the second you kind of sort of understand it, they're like, now here's how we're going to change it. And you're right. like, well, well, fuck everything. But not not surprisingly, everyone I grew up with who was able to do math, wildly successful. I know. <laughs> it is. There is no better indicator of future success than, you know, just being able I, to kill it. I think it's just because there's so many people like us who just look at any sort of numbers and we're just like, fuck Or maybe that. it's like hard for everybody and they get it because they try extra hard. Hard and they're yeah. tryhards and the tryhards. Some people's well. brains just have it. Yeah. I had a friend who he would just he just picked up math very well. Yeah, he's not successful at all though. Was he a larper? <laughs> no, he was <laughs> no, a but... dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> he smoked cigarettes inside his house and. <laughs> oh wow! Yeah, that's not good. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Uh, I really do have a friend who uh, goes into the woods and, and wears like steel armor and beats the shit out of the other guys with steel armor and they have like these weird like uh, bamboo stick sword things and they, I've heard of them. Oh yeah, and, and they like they they they're the ones where like you can't break character like you right, straight up right. you have to be like you know Lothar for the whole weekend. <laughs> yeah, it's like the fucking medieval fair yeah. or whatever Rin, Rin, fair. Rin fair yeah they have like well they have like these like huge festivals where they do all that shit but they have like giant ass like things set up for like literally just a an, just complete madness where it's just it's not even like like set up like a uh uh um confederate re or what do you call it? civil war reenactment. Uh, reenactment where like there's a gonna be a winner it's just right. they just go into a, a giant scrum and just <laughs> beat the <laughs> fuck out of each other and like i'm not even exaggerating like he would i'd go to his place you know because we'd always like watch a movie get higher so i'm like um and we'd be hanging out hey, he got like he started me in stand-up so it was like always my dude uh we had to go to his place and he'd be like wincing and i'd be like all right let me fucking see it and he'd be like you're gonna go make fun of me i was like of course i'm gonna make fun yeah. of you you let another man beat the shit out of you with a stick let me see it <laughs> <laughs> and then he would like take his shirt off and it would be the gnarliest scariest just oh my god did you go to the hospital <laughs> Hospital, like bruise and it's like aren't you wearing fucking armor and it's like yeah but it still hurts it's like why are you doing this and it would just be like for real like broken rib type oh, scary geez. shit and it would just be like he'd be like you should see the other guy and I was like I don't want to see the other guy you're all fucking insane yeah. for the love of the game yeah just it was like the love of hurting each other yeah or like well he he always I'm, I haven't said his name so I can be honest he would always be like you don't understand man everybody's having sex there and it was like so it's just band camp <laughs> your band camp and where instead of playing music you just hit each other with sticks yeah, it's like well yeah, yeah it is like all people from band probably yeah so it's it like really any is. over the weekend camping music fest or yeah. anything like that yeah we're all they, fucking well, they're, each well, yeah they're not like they're all fucking they're not doing other. drugs though but they're they're drinking like their body weight and mead <laughs> And then having orgies. <laughs> yeah, for like, they have like a king and a queen. And I came over to his house one time when he was having like a party with them. And he was like, Yeah, you should come over. I mean, it, it might be a little weird, but you should come over. And I was like, There's no, no way I'm not going to watch this fucking train wreck. <laughs> so I went over to his house, and there was literally, this is not a joke, there was a king and a queen in the two chairs. And everybody, yeah. everybody else was seated at the, on the floor. <laughs> oh, yeah. And they were totally holding court, being like the social luminaries of the thing. And then I looked over at my friend, and I was like, Where's my friend? And I see my friend in the corner by the queen, and I was like, "Well, I guess that's fine." And then I was like, "What is he doing?" And I looked down, and he was massaging her feet. Uh, <laughs> it was horrific. Oh, yeah, they're definitely into weird sex uh, stuff. If that's going, oh down. yeah, yeah. And I was just like, "Oh man, this is just so fucking." I, obviously, like I left immediately, but uh, <laughs> I, it was like you know, like we always <laughs> talk about how we watch documentaries, and it's like you know, I all I, like Rivers always says it's his dream to make a documentary, and I like I used to be. 
absolutely obsessed about making a documentary about these Ren Faire people. Oh yeah, because it would just be fucking goddamn bananas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I even like went like I was like, looking, let's do it, man. Seriously. Well, I'm gonna get to why we can't. Uh, <laughs> like I was actually looking at cameras to rent. Like I had, yeah. I had, <laughs> I, I, I had other comedians committed to like f- total cafe pretending like we were gonna like you know be yeah, part of it so they wouldn't hate us. It. Like we were. Like making plans yeah. to do this, and then when I like finally broke, like you know, got, got the courage up to tell my friend uh, I was going to do it. He was like, "Oh no, you're like you don't realize people always try to do that. You will be sued." <laughs> and I was like, "I was like, what do you mean?" And he's like, "I'm not even joking. They will straight up sue you the second they find out you're uh-huh. like you're not well, legit." And I, I was like, "How do you know?" And he was like, "Because you're not. This is like a common idea amongst people to like film us. We know we're weird, right? Right? They're like half of them are lawyers. They will sue." <laughs> <laughs> they will sue the shit out See, of you. See, I wouldn't even necessarily need to get into the the thing. It's I would funny just, it would the just shame be funny. They just have it. Just be funny to <laughs> like just to film the culture because it is because my my brief like yeah it, they don't want that either. <laughs> they know no, that's I mean, they, fucking I weird. I think it's too. one of those things where they are completely aware they're being nerdy as fuck. So yeah. it's just like well, either get into it or fuck off. Is yeah, kind of their, get their, in the orgy my, or get out of here. My my only like brief like uh, you know interaction with any kind of Renfair thing was I was working at a community community art center and we had this program at the right at the beginning of the school year where the idea was it was i think there were at the time there were five middle schools or, or five elementary schools in auburn so each day a different elementary school would come to the art center and uh do medieval themed stuff yeah. so like okay. they'd go into the art room okay. and do like you know illumination illuminated manuscripts and then you know they had medieval games that's what i was hosting i'll actually post this picture on a uh, on twitter there's a picture of me wearing a tunic and some uh, linen pants uh my my medieval uh game master uh <laughs> uniform uh that i had to wear but they hired a professional king and queen from like the rin fair oh it. like that's a that's not legit yes, king and that's queen. Not you le- did not mishear me a that is what their well, whole that's not legit then their, because apparently within these communities they like elect their king yeah. and queen from the community and like they, well, and it's like you have your hierarchy of like i remember when my friend got some kind of like um I forget the name, but it was like he was like an announcer or something. Right, right. the king and queen have uh, to fuck even if they're not well, a couple. Well, I'm pretty sure they're fucking whoever they want to fuck. I'm well, think, that, I'm thinking that's part yeah, of it. Yeah, no, that yeah. is 100% part of but it. But like people. these people are like elected and part of the whole community is <laughs> like you bow to your motherfucking yes. king. Like yes. this shit is like so yeah. serious. Like so the, most it, of it's like a big joke and let's go fuck in the woods after right. we beat each other up with sticks and get drunk off mm-hmm. meat. Yeah. But that shit is heavy well, duty. So in this case, they were the, they started the company. So this wasn't LARPing. This, they were Renfair uh uh, king and queen so they would have you know ren fairs with jousting and like the full thing and they would basically run the whole show and because they owned the company they were husband and wife and they were the king and queen they did not break kayfabe the whole week the whole week they were like walking around like your majesty like you know like talking in their fucking fake british accents and shit on the last day the last elementary school got on the bus and left and then we all ordered pizza for everybody and then they broke kayfabe and started telling us stories about ren fair and this, this guy was just like oh yeah you know uh you know, sometimes we'll have workers that, uh, you know, they just don't, uh, they don't work out. But, uh, you know, if they disobey me, then we put them in the games, the combat games. <laughs> and I was like, what? And he was like, oh, yeah, yeah. You know, we'll give him a sword and an armor. And then I just kind of, you know, let one of my knights just fuck him up. <laughs> Just, that's like, like that is that's psychotic. like a for yeah. real a punishment too because <laughs> yeah. like my friend would awful. my friend would like straight up practice uh, yeah like oh, he yeah. was like I gotta get good and then he would come back beat the fuck up and he'd be like I suck dude like yeah. uh, he's like there's like. 250 pound like six foot three like dudes who yeah, eat, yeah, yeah. eat breathe shit sword fighting just so they can go destroy people at these events yeah they said that some uh, guy was supposed to carry a bunch of shit onto the festival grounds but to save time he just backed his truck up to the tent oh that's and that is bad broke the, t- oh, the that's time all continuum bad. broke the kayfabe yeah. of the, it's, and so they put him in a helmet and fucked his shit up in front yeah. of everybody Man, <laughs> like had the black sounds... knight whack him with a sword in the these fucking people head. just keep sounding worse and worse That's, as this I mean, conversation goes on. It's documentary, man. But if you, they know it's they're literally a cult. I mean, yeah. it's totally a fucking it cult, is, but yeah. it's not like a cult where they're like 
ruining your life. Or we taking don't know that. I mean, don't know this that. is what the documentary would seek to explore. So. Yeah, but they yeah. wouldn't let us. Yeah, well, I would Jordy like to. Knows. I would like to put it on record right now. I had nothing to do with uh, <laughs> this documentary. And if there's any litigious <laughs> people out there in the the, the Ren Fair world, I uh, uh, I have no no yeah, part. Rivers wants to fuck with these people that know how to hit you with sticks. No, I don't want to fuck with them. I just literally want to document them. So yeah, do yeah. some you, cinema you, verite. You, you there's no that. trickery involved. It would just be like. But they know how. It's like Joe was saying. They know that. That they look laughable. They're not, and, they're, they're and they not, know oh, yeah. you're not going to not put those parts yeah, but in. Think they, about they how many documentaries are that exactly. No, but though. they don't have disorders. They're not like completely yeah, they unaware. Did. They're going to realize like I'm the joke. Fuck off. Like, yeah. they're, they're going to sue the shit. But out how of many documentaries are? I know I'm the joke. Fuck off. But they let them do it anyway. But these people aren't desperate for money. No, okay, no, you're you're enough. you're entering their world and ruining their their privacy of the, yeah. They, of they, they fucking and fighting. They the know. Woods. Anybody who's doing that is trying to mock them. They know that they're a, a wand up merchant. Mm-hmm. I got one more story I wanted to share with you guys. This uh, comes to us from Southwest Ranches, Florida. Uh, Courtney Wilson and Shanita Jones invited family and friends to their dream home and estate for their weekend wedding celebration. There was the ceremony on Saturday and brunch on Sunday. There was just one problem. The couple did not own the 16,000 square foot mansion and did not have permission to be there. <laughs> nice. <laughs> the, the suburban Fort Lauderdale estate had everything. A bowling alley, a swimming pool with a waterfall, hot tub, tennis courts, gazebo, an 800 foot bar. And, Jeez. and Wilson said it was God's plan that the couple marry there. Uh, All right. That's a God I can get behind. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. The God that's like, yo, fuck these rich people and their abandoned mansions. Uh, uh, <laughs> was it an ceremony. abandoned mansion? Yeah. Or it was it like, like have or, to be. Or, or, but is it well, like, or is the owner on vacation? I think they thought it was an abandoned mansion. But despite what the invitation inferred, the actual owner, Nathan Finkel, never gave them permission to hold the festivities there. And he was stunned when Wilson showed up on Saturday morning to set up. And so he uh, called Wait, the police. Wait, so he was living there? He <laughs> Quote, this is what he said to the to the 911. I have people trespassing on my property and they keep harassing me and they say they're having a wedding here and it's God's message. I don't know what's going on. All I want is for it to stop and they're sitting on my property right now. <laughs> so they didn't even attempt to see that anyone was living there. They just assumed God was right. And then they just assumed that guy was like a maintenance dude or plumber or whatever, landscaper. I like, love, you don't got to listen to this guy. I love the idea of doing zero like <laughs> prep for the idea of like a... a of, oh, I, I, think, I think there was a lot of prep and they were just Leroy Jenkins in it. They were like, fuck it. Just let's go for it, man. Why not? I just don't... I just <laughs> what do you go in the guest get there and you're like oh by the way we can't we, go inside <laughs> listen <laughs> grandma you might have to run yeah <laughs> if the cops come also, get ready the, there's no bathrooms who's, those are inside and we don't have the keys who, to who's, that part who's on grandma helen's wheelchair duty when the cops show up <laughs> <laughs> just, well, Aaron, can you do it? I just okay. don't understand what their their plan was. Uh, two officers told Wilson that he would have to leave. He did, and no charges were filed. Quote, I don't want to talk about it, Wilson told the paper. <laughs> 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 Finkel, whose late father was an early IHOP restaurant franchisee, has been, a, has been trying to sell the property for two years now, listing it for just $5 million. Uh, Wilson, posing as a potential buyer, toured the estate several months oh, ago. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and an attorney for the Southwest Ranches, the upscale suburbs where Finkel resides, uh, quote, a few months later, this guy asked Nathan if he could go and use Nathan's backyard for his wedding, and Nathan said no. But that did not stop the couple from sending out invitations, detailing their love story, and reconnecting after 30 years and how he proposed over pizza on Christmas Eve. Uh, the Saturday afternoon cer ceremony would be followed by a red carpet cocktail hour and a reception <laughs> lasting past midnight. And Sunday brunch would be from four to noon, so they thought they could get away with this for two, two days. days. And after midnight. <laughs> also, I love it's a red carpet cocktail hour that presumably is outside because you, you can't get inside. They're not, they don't got a key to this fucking place. Well, that's uh, a common wedding thing is they'll just roll out any they'll just do anything and call it anything right, they're gonna right. roll out a red rug and drink around it <laughs> and take instagram pictures how many people i hate weddings so <laughs> much after yeah. working at sam, a wedding venue yeah, sam worked at a wedding venue <laughs> how how uh how many people showed up if it was like 
They eight. got kicked out. If it was yeah, like it didn't eight, happen. I know some saying, but like I wonder how many people were playing the come because if it's like eight people, yeah, I could maybe believe they could pull this off. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. That's but way too like, much stuff to but be if happening. It's, yeah, but if it's like a hundred people and he's like two days <laughs> of love- drunken madness yeah, in your backyard, it's, it's two days. You have to imagine it's a pretty big wedding. Uh, quote: The guy figured it was a vacant house and didn't realize that Nathan still lived on the property in a different home. The guy had no idea he lived there. You know the shock that must have been on his face when he showed up at the game and the owner was home. Uh, Broward County records show a marriage license has been issued to the couple last week, but they had not registered as married by Wednesday. So uh, I love that, like, <laughs> not even married. I, I love that his way to, like, say, like, he gets caught red handed. It's like, hey, man, God, this is God's plan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, he kept saying that. He's like, it's God's plan that we have the wedding here. We- it, it is God's plan that we use your property. I don't care what Mr. Nathan says. Wait, where this is this at again? Uh, if it's in uh, uh, Florida. It's, it's near Fort Lauderdale. Yeah. The, oh, of course. The name of the estate is Southwest Ranches. So okay. it's like a big, you know, uh, God, people in the South love using God as an excuse for everything. Because <laughs> even if they do something bad, they can pray it, pray it away and get God forgiven by God. Hi, motherfucker. This is God's goddamn plan. It might be it might be man's law that you share property, but it, this weekend it's God's law that it's my property. And I, I'm marrying my wife, and we're going to do it in front of Jesus and your children. I don't <laughs> care what the International House of Pancakes King says. <laughs> I get to be here it's because funny Jesus that says he's just living in a guest house on his own crazy huge property huge mansion yeah because living in a giant mansion by yourself would truly be the saddest thing oh in the world. god i would turn it oh, I, I doubt it was because it was sad it's probably just too much house for one person right yeah, right. you yeah. couldn't even keep it up oh yeah i if give me a mansion i turn into daniel Plainview. at the end of there will be blood really quickly just rolling around <laughs> on a rolling chair shooting buffaloes with shotguns and things you know all kinds of crazy shit <laughs> but yeah joe where can people find you on the internet Joe MF Reigns at Twitter, Instagram, and all the likes. Sam, please tell people where they can find you online. Slam Harder at Twitter and on TikTok. I posted a great video today where I point a Nerf gun at Cooper and he cowers in fear. <laughs> Hell yeah. Um, well, uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, find me on uh, Twitter and Instagram at Rivers Langley, and you can tweet at us at The Goods Pod. Uh, we've got a, a, a quite a few new uh, reviews on Sherm Doubt. So, oh, good. Yeah, good. yeah. Those have been rolling. Are in. they crazy? Oh, yeah. There's, 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 <laughs> Fuck there's, yeah. There's read them off. Ones. I want to read them. Oh, no. We're we going to wait till the gonna, contest. We've got to read them till the contest. And so, this, <gasps> the, so, next Friday is when I'm going to pick the winner. So, go to uh, the uh, Sherm Doubt podcast on Apple Podcasts. Give them five stars. Write something funny and crazy. Uh, don't cuss because uh, Apple doesn't like it when you cuss. Uh, family but the, company. But the comment that said balls did get through. So uh, I, think, I guess you could say balls. You could probably say balls, but probably not butthole. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, make it make it PG, but wild. And uh, I do think butthole is the, like, the funniest word. Ever. It's pretty good. Go. But uh, yeah, and I'll pick the winner next Friday and I will send you uh, the funniest one gets a T-shirt uh, of the goods from the woods from pro wrestling com slash the goods pod thank you gentlemen so much for being with me now i'm going to go hop in the car drive over to monrovia california where i'm going to be speaking to comedian chris crofton in just a second here on the free show and for those of you on our patreon patreon.com slash the goods pod head over there right now where you can hear me and chris talking for two full hours about the very ill-conceived 1978 sergeant pepper's lonely hearts club band movie starring the bgs and peter frampton so uh uh, stay tuned. Chris Crofton coming up next. We're in Monrovia and I'm uh, sitting face to face for the first time since the pandemic with Chris Crofton. Hey, what's up? We're gearing up here to uh, do our uh, Patreon episode for this week all about 1978's Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band, starring Peter Frampton and the Bee Gees. It's just a oh, uh, Jesus. It's uh, if you if you think that sounds like a great idea for a movie, you are right. It's <laughs> and one you- of the few <laughs> movies where you can like someone can say that it's called Sergeant Pepper the movie, and you have like no idea what that <laughs> means at all you know what i mean like most movies you can guess yeah like it, if a movie's called like the elevator or something it's yeah like a spooky poster that's probably like a haunted elevator but if it's a movie called sergeant peppers and it starts 
Star, and it's ten years after Sergeant Pepper's came out. <laughs> yeah, it stars a bunch of people who had nothing to do with Sergeant Pepper's. Mm-hmm. It's kind of uh, confusing. <laughs> and, uh, so that'll be going on at uh, Patreon.com. Oh, man, you got to tune in because it's <laughs> madness. And also, I really like being Patreon content because I do feel exclusive. He's he's it's all the place elite. I should be. I yeah, like I should be. Chris Crofton is all elite uh, over there. At Patreon.com is that slash a wrestling reference. The Good Spot. Yeah, all elite yeah, wrestling. Yeah, whenever yeah. Uh, whenever somebody defects from the wwe they'll put it and then they go over there they'll put it up on twitter they'll go paul white is all elite and then they have the picture of the big show or whatever so but they had that laughing stock problem with the exploding ring show they did oh man oh incredible i'm a big fmw 90s fan uh-huh yeah yeah and they knew how to blow up, blow up a ring oh absolutely yeah yeah no that it that was uh that was rough but i didn't i only heard about it on the jim Cornette. Oh, podcast. Oh so man, I don't watch the pay per views of that. Oh, Jim Cornette. I, I you know, it's funny because I, I rare, I, I rarely find myself even agreeing with the guy because he's so relentlessly negative. But he's so entertaining <laughs> in his relentless negativity that I listen to all those clips because it is just one of those things of like. Like he was just, you know, I loved WrestleMania. I'm on record on the Patreon talking about it, and he hated every match. And okay. I was like, it, but I didn't find myself like mad at his opinion. I was just like, I mean, you know, it's just fun to listen to an old cranky guy yell. <laughs> so, well, yeah, it's like if, if, um, if, you know, if someone hired me to, or if I had a podcast where I just talked about the restaurant I used to work at, <laughs> <laughs> shop talk. Yeah. I mean, you're going to be mad. I mean, yeah. Jim Cornette is mad at the WWF. So. Yeah, exactly. Um, but, uh, yeah, so that's, that's going to be going on in a minute, but I figured we would, uh, put something on the free show for funsies and, uh, I would, uh, I got, uh, I got a fun news story and got a, uh, jam of the day coming Ooh, up. Oh. But, uh, I was going to ask you first, you know, you, you did something similar to me, which was you went back east. Uh, to Nashville for a bit and then made your way back out to LA. How was uh how was your road trip? Did you uh did you have any uh weird fun adventures on the road on the way back out here? I mean, yeah, I guess because I I well on the way I did it twice. I did it once last at the end of last August, which coincidentally was like one day before the fires hit out here. Monrovia is up against it's it's near it's like northeast, I think. I, I think northeast of Pasadena, so it's just like up against the mountains, so the, there was a fire up here. Well, it was basically like in between one. the two big fires. There's one in San Bernardino, which is just down the road a ways, and then there's one in Pasadena, so you are kind of got and fire on both sides. There was one side. that came right. I mean, there was one that came, almost destroyed this town. I yeah. Mean, they yeah, they yeah. stopped it just like right above where I hike. So the, uh-huh. the, the mountains behind where I hike out here are all bare. And there's less bears because I used to. See I was about bears. to say, yeah, there's they're bare, not I used full to see of bears. Tons of bears, and I don't see. You know, I haven't seen them. I've seen one bear since the fires. Oh um, wow! I saw like seven last year, but um, so yeah, I drove the first time I drove across. Then I came back in like October or something, and then th- that was sort of uneventful. But then in the winter, like this is funny because well, this you know that's what we're supposed to be doing here. Um, so uh, <laughs> I drove. <laughs> <laughs> Both trips were uneventful. Oh, okay. The end. Oh, okay. Um, so, yeah. No, what happened was I drove in the winter time. So I drove like, you know, like in the de- beginning of December, but it hadn't really started snowing. But even on that, I, I guess there could have been snow, but I don't look at the weather. Right, right. <laughs> and, and I don't look at it ever. Yeah. And I don't c- care about it until I'm in it. And then I'm like, oh, no. You know, but I don't, I do not acknowledge that it's something I need to check. Is, is that a lifelong thing or is that a symptom of living in LA? No, it's a, I don't know. I don't know. I think it's both. Yeah. I, think I just am a spaced out person who's thinking about, yeah, yeah. You know, wrestling, 1980s wrestling <laughs> when I should be thinking about weather. Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. But other people mention it and I'm stunned. Like, they're like, did you check the weather? Like, about snow? And I'm like, oh, my God. I didn't even think about it. Yeah. They're like, it's, December you know um and I'm like oh boy so but here's the best part so I drive across this I didn't even worry about snow on the way over because I think it was like late November or something right and then but then on the way back I came back in end of January and I was like well I should probably take the southern route I'm coming from Nashville and there's a way you can take like the like the 10 through Texas and stuff yeah oh the most boring road in America so I was like gonna do that yeah but I couldn't get my my I couldn't get my phone app to let me put in any other route. They just kept telling me the fastest route to do 40 was across all 40. The way. And I, yeah. I, since I couldn't make it stop doing that, I took 40. Oh. And I ended up in a snowstorm. 
<laughs> oh, well, the way to do that is to program it for New Orleans. And then once you get to New Orleans, right. then you program LA. Yeah. As a man who doesn't even care about the weather, <laughs> you know, a person, do you think I care enough to figure out how to use a, okay. how to use a, 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 a GPS? GPS? No, yeah. of course not. Of course yeah. not. Do, I, do I have time for that when I'm busy eating candy and watching uh, YouTube? <laughs> no. So, yeah. So that was really what happened. I fucking, like, I got to this point in the road and I was like, it's, it kept putting me back on the 40 route. Right, right. And finally, I was like, oh, who cares? It's probably not going to snow. Yeah, it'll be fine. So I did it. <laughs> so I got to around Albuquerque. Uh-huh, yeah. And first of all, there was a, what do you call them? Fucking cartoon things that happened. Dust storm. It, 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 fucking uh, dust what, devil. It, it, those, no, those fucking rolling things. Oh. Tumbleweeds. Tumbleweeds. Oh, yeah, okay. Okay, so <laughs> we like a couple of Those them. Those are terrifying. There were like a couple of them. Yeah, sometimes they're as then big as the car. there were thousands of them, and they were <laughs> fucking... I was driving like... I mean, I got, it was the only time on either trip that I actually got scared. I st- there was a point where I started saying, oh, my God, oh, my God. Yeah. Because I didn't know how heavy they were. I mean... They're I, fucking huge. Right, so like... Yeah. I, I managed to make most of them not hit my Honda Fit, which is about the same size as the, the size bigger of ones. A tumbleweed, yes. And so one finally did hit the car, and then I realized they're not really very heavy. Yeah, they're so, not impactful, but they're fucking terrifying. But it was scary. So then yeah. I, I was like, I got to get off the road. <laughs> but then I was like, well, I'll get over this ridge or whatever. I don't even know what a ridge is. Over this hill. Yeah. And uh, and and then I did go down into this sort of valley, and it settled down. Right. And then, but then it started snowing. And, <laughs> then, and then it was like everybody's going one mile an hour, and then... I was like, I had already decided I kind of wanted to get off the road, but as soon as the tumbleweed stopped, I was like, stopped. I was like, ah, it's probably gonna be okay. But then when it started snowing, I did try and get a motel. But guess what? Uh, <laughs> this is the kind of thing people who think about the weather probably know already. Uh-huh. Everybody else wanted to get a motel too, right, right. so I couldn't get one because uh. everyone else had already checked the weather and knew it was gonna snow before <laughs> I knew it because it was happening. Oh, shit. So. I just was like, listen, I can't find a place to stay, so I guess I'm just going to have to keep driving. So yeah. I was going to drive to L.A. I was like, fuck it. I could drive 10 more hours. I already <laughs> been driving like 11 hours. So I was yeah, like... Yeah, yeah. Damn. Like, I'd already had a long day. It was like... I was driving like 10 and a half hours a day, but I was like, this was already a long day, and then I was going to just be like, fuck it, I'll just drive 18 <laughs> hours or whatever. And then I was like, that's insane. And then, the, then we were crawling through the... There was a car flipped over. Oh, sure. Yeah, in yeah. the snow, when we went by, the next day, there were cars flipped over all over the fucking place. Oh, yeah. So yeah. I got off the highway finally, you know, 20, 30 miles, 40 miles past Albuquerque, and I did find a... Because also, the motels in that area are few and i mean once you get out of a big city in new mexico right, right yeah oh my god it's like oh yeah there, it's always in bugs bunny cartoons where they have the sign that says last gas for 200 yes. miles those don't exist they don't have those signs you have to know no i've almost <laughs> run out of gas i had like my car went down past the i mean it went to like you have zero miles left yep, and i was yep. like had like three miles to go to the gas station yeah and i guess yeah. That happened to me outside Winslow, that Arizona. To me a couple times. Yeah. <laughs> they don't give you a heads up. No, you just got to know. <laughs> and there are, so yeah, this is a good heads up for people on 40 in New Mexico, especially. Yeah, fill up whatever you can, <laughs> even yeah, if you, you got half into, a tank. <laughs> when you get into like, um, probably like, I guess, like it's basically Native American reservation. Country. Yeah, Hopi reservations. It's and like stuff there's like just that. few gas stations. And um, it's also really evident how poor, uh, uh, just so many people in america are oh yeah you go through that fucking corridor and you just stop at any town yeah especially to come carry oh yes yes wh- which is just like i drove around out there because i know the song um willing, willing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah i was about to say little feet man it's like but that town is just desolate i mean it's just to hatch a beat a ton of paw <laughs> yeah it's yeah. all boarded up and this is amazing anyway so there's not a lot of gas stations there's not a lot of stores there's not yeah. a lot of anything oh yeah and um yeah so i um I did find a place to stay, and it was a Native American owned hotel, and they were so it's totally cool. And the guy was like, "I'm glad you pulled over because the highway's closed, right? Up yeah, ahead, completely closed. Oh wow! So I was like, "Oh man, you know, like all these things are surprises to me." Yeah, yeah. No, I had a similar because like, I, I took uh, on the way back. I wanted to go. Basically, I wanted to go the one 
big east to west uh, interstate I'd never done, which is 90 up through uh-huh. South Dakota and Montana oh, and all that yeah. stuff. And so I went up to Chicago, then over to Minneapolis and then went across. And I was in, I was outside of Wyoming. Uh, I, I was in Wyoming, I should say, uh, right near the border with Montana. And I was on the, fr- I was on the phone. I either got the hands free in the rental car. So mm-hmm. I'm chatting with my buddy and he's like, Oh, what's the weather like? I was like, man, I'm on a prairie and it is sunny and it is like, 75 like it's so nice and then i start going up a hill and just in the course of 50 a 15 minute conversation i went from like it's 70 and sunny and i'm on a prairie to i was on top of a mountain and it was a blizzard <laughs> like yeah. snow coming in sideways <laughs> like it was it just turned crazy and what car is that was it the blue car that's out there no i, I got a rental oh, specifically because okay, okay. i didn't want to put miles what kind on of car it was it i, I rented well i was trying to get a uh i took a i got a i rented a nissan rogue which is like a slightly it's like a mid-size suv uh and that's what i took on the way to alabama and i rented the same thing for the way back mm-hmm. but then they gave me a uh, a gmc acadia which is a fucking huge suv oh good <laughs> so not great on gas but i was i was prepared for exactly that's this good. thing yeah, yeah. and uh but yeah we ended up going through a blizzard the, the funniest thing that i don't think i've told on the podcast yet because i did talk about on uh the first episode back i stayed at a really sketchy hotel in, in rapid city south dakota uh-huh. um but the only other like semi funny sketchy thing that happened at a hotel is I stopped outside of uh, St. George, Utah uh, to for my last night, and then I was just going to drive. It's pretty near to Vegas, so I was mm-hmm. just drove back to LA the next day. And when I got there, I rolled up at the hotel. It was like a Super 8, and uh, you know, I had no idea. It was dark. I couldn't really see anything, and I was like, I don't know what kind of town this is, but hey, there's a bed, and I'm going to sleep here. Mm-hmm. And I go to check in, and it's like an older Indian fella, and uh, he saw that I was from LA, and he was like, oh, yo, I'm from Culver City. I was like, oh, that's awesome. And we started chatting about LA, and as I'm chatting my eyes sort of drift down to the counter and he has three 38 special bullets just sitting on the counter just as like a you know don't fuck around and find out kind of thing and i was like oh it's this kind of town all right cool it's a three bullet motel (laughs) it's like a rating (laughs) it's better than yeah we got two stars and three bullets so that's that's where we're at yeah i've I've done that too same kind of thing remote area just didn't do my research and just was like, I'll find a place to stay and pulling <laughs> over and stay in some sketchy fucking place. Out. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, they give you like, and they're the only game in town. So they're like, here's your towel. And it's like a, you know, piece of wood. So, right. You know, right. And, like, what uh, yeah. you, and I'm like, ah, wait a minute. And they're like, what are you going to do about it? You know, <laughs> yeah. There's not anything else. Where else are you going to go? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, you got to look at, you got to, I guess you should look at the weather. You should also just, I mean, if you, I'm never going to do that though. I know I'm just going to always yeah, be, d- dumb. be surprised. <laughs> and the one other thing was when I moved to Los Angeles, I originally, you know, six years ago or whatever, seven, almost seven years ago, I was like, man, I don't know where I'm going to stay on the way out there. Like, I don't know that many people on the way on 40. So I guess I just am like going to sleep in parking lots or whatever. Yeah. And they, people were like, well, what about motels? And I was yeah. like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I forgot motels existed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, I That's decide. how practical I am. You know, it's like. Right, right. It's like, hey, man, Walmart's got security. Might as well use them. Is there some way to protect yourself from this rain? Yeah. Here's an umbrella. <laughs> oh, fuck. Oh. I like this. Oh, yeah, I remember <laughs> these yeah no i've definitely i've definitely slept in the slept in a walmart parking lot they got those security guys that drive around all night so you know but i seriously was like what am, where am i gonna stay and they were like what do you i don't understand you <laughs> stay in a motel like, oh, oh thank you <laughs> Um, I, uh, I got this, uh, this story I wanted to share with you. This is, uh, and I found this out, you know, there's, uh, there's New Jersey in America, uh, and then there's, there's OG original formula Jersey, uh, which is an Island off the coast of England. I know about that shit. And I didn't know this. It's not, uh, technically it's a British like protectorate. It's not actually part of the UK. Uh, and its official title is the Bailiwick of Jersey. (laughs) Which I, I was yeah, like, they talk about bailiwicks over there. Yeah, yeah. People so. know what that is. It always sounds to me like I always think of the wick of a lighthouse. Yeah, I mean, I was just you know, it's it's an area of expertise over here. Oh, that's oh, that's right. Pro wrestling. That's my bailiwick. You know that I kind of thing. Forgot about that. I use wheelhouse for that. <laughs> yeah, same 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 idea, <laughs> okay. I guess. Um, but yeah, this is from the bailiwick of Jersey. A town jeweler found guilty of laundering money as part of a one million pound drug smuggling bid says that he wants to fight against his conviction literally 
<laughs> Appearing in the royal court yesterday, Darius Pierce, 49 years old, said that he was hoping for his appeal to be dealt with via trial by combat oh. <laughs> as he made a representation before Commissioner Julian Clyde Smith. Pierce is currently in custody at Lemoy as he waits sentencing on uh, July 5th, and he was found guilty of money laundering in December at the end of a week-long trial and after he received cash from members of a criminal gang on three occasions in 2019. Uh <laughs> So the guy got caught red-handed with a bunch of uh, stolen money. Okay. Uh, and he then took that money and bought gold with it and then uh, transferred that gold back to cash. So he laundered this big pile of money. Man, some people make their lives so complicated. <laughs> like, I seriously, you know, it's like I just scrape together rent and watch YouTube. I don't understand why everybody has to get in so much trouble. <laughs> yeah, the money was used to fund an attempt by smugglers to land cocaine, MDMA, and cannabis into Jersey using a charter yacht that sailed from the UK and anchored near St. Catherine in July 2019. Well, I give them an A for effort. Yeah, you that sounds I mean? fun. It's like, I just feel like people will make a lot of trouble for themselves, but I mean, I can't get inside their minds and tell them to calm down, you know? Yeah. But I would like to say to them, like, listen, <laughs> settle down. I mean, sell the boat. Yeah, sell the boat. <laughs> Stop talking about MDMA. Just act like a normal person. <laughs> this is going to end up bad. I don't know. I feel like do, doing Scarface shit on an island off of Britain, it's just not as glamorous as Miami. <laughs> I just think you have to get up. You have to do too much stuff. Like, yeah. Like renting boats and like talking to other people. Right. Especially after the pandemic. I'm like, I'm not doing any plots. Are you kidding me? I'm not even meeting anybody. I'm not even going to a coffee shop, I don't think. My willingness to do capers yeah, is way that. down. Nobody wants it. I'm not. Listen, man. If this was pre-pandemic, I'd be totally down to like do whatever you want to do. Like, like buy smuggled gold or whatever it is, but I just I'm, I just want to stay home now. Uh, uh, I like my kids. Turns out, um, uh, it's, it's, so that's that's funny. So he wants to like yeah, so fight the it, judge or something. It, no, he wants to fight the gang uh, that he was working for. <laughs> so he was found guilty of money laundering in December after a week long <laughs> trial, and he received cash from members of a criminal gang on three occasions. Oh yeah, I read that. Um, so. Uh, Police and customs officials have been tracking the gang's movements for months and swept down on the gang as they brought the drugs ashore. So that, I mean... That's when they get you. Uh, uh, six, <laughs> six men and one woman were jailed for a, just a total of under 74 years by the royal court last September. Pierce was arrested after the plot uh, was foiled, but unlike others, he maintained his innocence. Uh, he appeared before the commissioner yesterday to make several uh, applications, including one for bail, and he also indicated that he would be applying for his appeal to be dealt with by trial by combat and that he was therefore uh, there was therefore no grounds to keep him in custody in the meantime given that the outcome of the appeal would either be his death or his freedom so <laughs> he basically wants the people who are uh so i i looked this, this complicated, up complicated though because i don't understand so like so I those other people that kill him during the trial by combat, right. they're okay? They're like free, well, free to go? Or well, something? so I, I had to look this up because, you know, the phrase trial by combat, I assumed was like, you know, like a fist fight or something. But it, Giuliani said on the <laughs> lawn of the White House. Yes. The day of that thing. That was yeah. the craziest thing Giuliani said. Well, so I, I looked this up. So this is from uh, the trial by combat Wikipedia. Uh, in essence, trial by combat was a san- uh, was a judicially sanctioned. It's a Wilco EP. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, sorry. In essence, <laughs> it was a judicially, and I like that they use the phrase was, it was a judicially sanctioned duel. It remained in use throughout the European Middle Ages, uh, gradually dissipating in the course of the 16th century. But apparently... This guy was born at the wrong time. It's still in the law in Jersey. Oh, I, I like it. So <laughs> This guy's on the right track. Then. So it's a 10-pace duel. Like, that's what a trial by combat is. So if someone bears witness against you in a court and you're like, this guy is the only person that knows what happened besides me. And it's a, he said, she said, it's a way to alleviate a, he said, she said, uh, type of situation where if a witness comes forward and he's the only witness, then y'all have a duel and whoever doesn't die was right. Right. Which is not, <laughs> not correct. So uh, yeah. It so doesn't th- prove anything. It just proves <laughs> you were a better shot than the other person. It's exactly. not prove that they were right or wrong at all. <laughs> Uh, so, so wait, I don't, but here's the thing, like, what if he says he wants to have trial by combat, but the other person says they don't want to have trial. Well, he's appealing for it. That's the, that's the thing. So the other person, I guess, 
I guess they have to either, I I would assume they have to agree to it, uh, but apparently nobody, no lawyer on this island realized that this was still on the books. So essentially, I think what he's trying to do is just gum up the works more so than actually have a duel. But it is just very funny that this law that that in the Wikipedia is like it faded out in the 16th century. But no, that's too bad. I feel kind of bad for him as he's trying to like have some kind of fun right before he goes to jail the rest of his life. (laughs) You know, he's like, well, I'm going to make some trouble before I go. I want to have a trial by combat. And they're like, oh, Jesus. Um, All right. So he actually made a similar application in May 2020 uh, before uh, the commissioner wrote in a judgment at the time that he had raised a concern in my mind as to Mr. Mr. Pierce's mental health. Uh, The judgment also noted that the right to trial by combat had previously been abolished in England, but apparently still exists in Jersey law. So it's not legal in England, but it's legal on this uh, on this island here. Well, I'm pretty sure that Jersey was where Jimmy Savile. Oh there God! There was like child molestation going on on Jersey too, probably because it's some kind of a weird, weird. lawless zone or something. <laughs> it's, it's true that Jersey had something to do with uh, pedophile rings, also. So yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's definitely a dangerous place. <laughs> it seems like yeah, it seems like one of those out. places Mitt Romney would hide his money. You got to yeah. watch out, yeah. If, if someone <laughs> don't move to a bailiwick. <laughs> Because next thing you know, you'll be in a duel with someone that you don't even want to be in because that you tried to sue them because their property line was wrong. Or something. <laughs> They'll be like, listen, I'm going to shoot this guy. And they're like, I guess it's in the law. So. Uh, the Crown Advocate had said that Pierce had, provided, had failed to provide any evidence of the assets belonging to someone else. So they basically just have him dead to rights to this money laundering thing. And, uh, but, and that he can't provide evidence that it was anyone else's. But Yeah, he's, that would he's, be my thing. I'd just be like, listen, I don't know what money laundering is. Yeah, yeah. I just took some money and I bought some gold with it. And I mean, last time I checked, buying gold was okay. I mean, if there's duels allowed, then I'm sure buying gold's all right. Yeah. Uh, and I, I fucking love this. So uh, they have this position, the crown advocate, uh, which is essentially the prosecutor, right? Mm-hmm. The, the DA. Uh, Pierce also applied for crown advocate, and this is his actual name, Matthew Maladroit. <laughs> <laughs> so just a guy whose wow. last name is like you're a fumbly mumbly fucking wow. moron yeah uh matthew maladroit to be found in contempt of court suggesting that he hadn't sent pierce the case law that he was going to be relying on during sentencing quote the suggestion of the crown has failed to comply with this order is nonsense uh the uh he added that the commissioner has reserved his judgment which will be handed down at a later date so we'll see if there's a duel in the streets of uh of jersey i i, I hope I mean, i'm hoping for it yeah who cares anyway Anyways, this you know everybody everybody's so busy looking at Twitter they won't even notice. I mean, everybody in Jersey will be like, "What was that? Oh, that was just some trial by combat." We still have that. I mean, I don't care anyway. Don't, even, don't even answer me. Let me just keep looking at Twitter. Yeah, I, here's the thing. I think they should keep the trial by combat situation, but it shouldn't be guns. It should be. Uh, I don't know if you ever did this where they got the big inflatable bag and then two pedestals, and you have those uh, like on American Gladiators. They have what they call the pugil sticks, which just look like big oh, Q-tips. Yeah, yeah. I remember American uh, Gladiator. That's how it's got to be. You get the big pugil sticks, you get the giant Q-tip, and you try to knock the guy off the pedestal and whoever falls off the pedestal is uh, guilty. That's much nicer. Yeah, that'd be. Yeah, and then they're not dead. And that's just kind of fun. I mean, yeah, it's not yeah. fun for the guy who has to go to jail, but it's pretty fun for everyone else. Yeah, just tell him. <laughs> well, listen, listen, we'll let you have a non-legally binding pugil stick match. <laughs> But we're not going to do this trial by combat thing, and you're also still going to jail. <laughs> or just do straight up uh, uh, gladiators. You have to beat Malibu. If you can meet Malibu or Laser. Listen, we're, we feel bad for you because you feel like you got. I feel like you got tricked by these gangsters. So we're going to let you go through one one of those obstacle courses with the swimming pools that they have on TV. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. What's it called Splash Town or whatever? Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Those. Yeah, yeah. Ball. Simon Gibson. Oh, uh, 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 Cannonball. Yeah, so that's cannonball. Yeah. Something like that. We're yeah, yeah, one of those. Just because we feel sorry for you, we're not going to let you do trial co- by combat. You're still going to prison, but you can <laughs> put on a bathing suit and run through one of those, just because we feel kind of bad for you. Because it's trial by American Ninja Warrior. A for effort. We're going to let you do American Ninja Warrior. <laughs> And then you have to go to jail anyway. And if you, can't you can shoot anybody. If you can get a piece of the aggro crag <laughs> from Nickelodeon Guts, <laughs> then. You're going to get hit by a big boxing glove and land in a. <laughs> In a, in a pool full of urine, and then you're going to go to jail. I sentence you to double dare with Mark Summers. Exactly. You're going to get slimed on Nickelodeon, and then you're going to jail. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, Jersey, man. I mean, seriously, though, like, I don't know. It's like fun, the fun stuff that used to be absurd are now, like, I mean, it's just like everyone's such, I mean, Marjorie Taylor Greene being in the Senate 
is or no, she's a Congress person. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, just that by itself is like that's more crazy than <laughs> fucking trial by combat. Sure, have duels all day. Who cares? We got some fucking. Oh, anyway, someone, yeah. someone on someone on Twitter said she looked like a blonde foot, which I thought was really pretty accurate. Pretty accurate. I just imagined the the Silver Lake foot care sign, it's but with a blonde accurate. wig. It's yeah, pretty. It's yeah. Oh lordy, I drove through her district actually while I was back home. My my mom has a friend uh, who was in the market for a new mattress, and my mom does uh, estate sales. Mm-hmm. Um, actually, well, she she did. She's retiring. This is her last sale. Oh, wow. She's been in the business for like thirty years. That's cool. I like estate sales. Um, but. Uh, yeah, they, she had a she had a mattress in one of her sales, but her friend lives in North Georgia, and so her friend was like, "Yeah, I'll, uh, you know, I'll, I'll pay Rivers a hundred bucks to drive it up here." I was like, "Fuck yeah, let's do it!" Sure. So, but I had to drive through her district, and my God, those signs! I mean, this was in February, and those signs were still up everywhere. Like she had billboards and shit, crazy. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's rough stuff. So yeah, I, I I don't know. Like yeah, it's like Jersey's crazy for having trial by combat, but we're crazier <laughs> for having Marjorie Taylor Green. I, I mostly like to cover international stories that are wild because it makes me feel a little better. Oh yeah, <laughs> I want to move. I this is the other thing is I want to move. Sometimes I think like I got to get out of this country. I yeah, can't take yeah. this. You know, so I'm gonna move to. But but I don't research. You know, same kind right, of thing. Right. Like I'm gonna go to another country as the exact same. You know, I'll be like I'm gonna go to Brazil. Right. Oh, 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 Bolsonaro. Who's my president? I didn't bother to check before I came here. <laughs> oh, we're not doing elections anymore. Oh <laughs> shit. Oh, my God. oh, the CIA is propping up our guy. Oh damn. But no, I, it's my grandmother's. <laughs> Uh, first generation Irish, so I could get an Irish passport. Oh, buddy, let's go. That's where I'm going. That's you're that's, gonna go to Ireland. That's uh, if I mean. Do you have the same system? If, if Trump comes, no, I don't. But if Trump comes back in 2024, man, I got. Yeah, but then I, I feel like I'm going to Ireland, and they're gonna be like, "Did you look into Ireland? You know what I mean? They're gonna well, be like, it does rain there every day, so oh, yeah. it's it's kind of opposite LA. The weather is always the same. It's not and very it's, big. Huh? No, but it's gorgeous, man. It's tiny, though, isn't it? It's really small. I loved it, dude. And there's comedy oh, there. Oh, you've been there? I've never been yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. I went to Dub- Dublin. Uh, Dublin's, it's cool because, I mean, it's obviously like a world capital. It's a large city, but it's it's it, it's almost like uh, San Francisco or something. You can walk across the center part of Dublin in an afternoon. That's amazing. It's yeah, gorgeous, I, too. I've thought about it. I mean, I, I, I but I, it's just more like I'd like to uh, make, I mean, I first of all, Oh, I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I, I wish America would get better. Is what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, I exactly. Wish I, get, I should stay and help. Yeah, as if I'm gonna. <laughs> hey, you know, I should stay and try and fix it though. That's the thing yeah. I feel like. I think we both should. You're a good guy. Okay. I think yeah. we better. We, they need us here. Oh, uh, but the comedy is over. Uh, but so what would we do? I don't I, like. What would we do? That we do just comedy for a living. The comedy over there is so it. fun. I, mean, I, I, mean, I, I did two, making a living though. Oh, podcast, I don't know if you can make a living, but I did two shows in Dublin and they were fucking amazing. I had to obviously address the fact that I was American up top and then it was just a matter of asking the other comedians i'm like all right what other town what town do you guys hate and they're like oh belfast i'm like okay so i just like was talked about me being uh from america shit talk trump a little bit to let him know i was cool and then started shitting on belfast yeah, and they loved it that. that's like yeah when you find out out here like you're supposed to say like fresno sucks <laughs> right yeah. right yeah or in my case if they aren't laughing you just say hey this shit works in fresno yeah, fucking yeah. get with it mm-hmm. and i don't even know why yeah it works and you don't even know why <laughs> yeah I've been to fresno. yeah i don't know yeah exactly it works every time. <laughs> um, well, uh, yeah, we're going to uh, move on to our Patreon thing in just a second here. But first, Chris. Yes. Are you ready? I'm ready. For our jam of the day. I mean, I'm ready for anything. <laughs> uh, Chris was nice enough to join us on uh, uh, me and Carter uh, on, on the phone uh, for Bon Jovi's Wanted Dead or Alive. So I figured we'd go back into the uh, kind of classic rock genre a little bit with uh, this one here. This is Joe Walsh with life's been good so what what is your experience with this song well what year did it come out does it say i think it's uh, 76 uh, yeah something like that okay so i was seven years old but i was like really into music because my mom listened to music in the car and um well i guess i was in the, always in the car with my mom you know just going to school or going to well whatever it was i heard a lot of radio and 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 uh joe walsh's good life's been good to me so far really it had kind of a story, yeah, which I yeah. liked. You know, it was like, and I didn't really understand it exactly, but I knew the part where he said, "I go to parties, 
sometimes until four. It's hard to leave when you can't find the door. Uh -huh. And I thought that was really funny, and like I kind of got it. Right, right. And it kind of made me want to drink, and then I became an alcoholic. Oh, God. <laughs> well, <laughs> hopefully this doesn't cause a, but really, a relapse. It was intriguing. It's a song about partying and yeah. like kind of dark adventures. Well, it's, and, and it's cool because it's kind of got uh, it's got a reggae beat to it a little bit, and it almost uh, you know kind of is a precursor to hair metal a little bit because it is a song. And I believe it's it's done kind of ironically, but it is a song about like rock star excess and it's yeah. not too different from the ethos that would become hair metal and then eventually like even hip hop, you know, in like the late nineties of just being like, Look how much shit I can buy. <laughs> I can yeah. do anything. So Yeah. Yeah. Except he was you know, he wasn't he was being sarcastic. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And wasn't. some of these some of these comments will reflect the fact that people don't understand. Oh, is this we're gonna read the comments? Oh yeah. Oh, oh I've I got some that. comments oh, for you. Okay, cool. Oh yeah, All yeah. Right. So yeah, I mean that was good. <laughs> that song was great, and I also thought it was weird that it was so long. It got kind of boring for me as a seven year old, eight year old. Sure, I yeah. I remember like during the ah, ooh, ah, it's ooh, ah, yeah ooh, 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 ah, that part. Yeah. I didn't know why it was so long. Well, this song is a classic AOR kind of uh, uh, stalwart because it's eight and a half minutes long yeah. and you know people talk about this with songs like Bohemian Rhapsody and Free Bird that if you hear that song on a radio station where there's a live DJ that DJ is either outside smoking a joint or taking a shit that makes sense, yeah. <laughs> and that's what these songs are for I had no idea as a kid I just thought like I didn't know they made the song so long so the DJs could take a shit. Yeah, that's that's how AOR that's how AOR started. That's it was how, like Paola. It was like a version of Paola. Yeah. Like, listen, like 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 Joe Walsh is like, what would make you play this song? Give They're me like, well, just put one eight minute one on there. Right, and we'll right. Spin it. He's calling Capitol Records. Like, listen, man, I have Crohn's, uh, so I need a lot of long songs. Listen, and yeah, Capitol Records is like, one, it will listen, get you. Listen, you get Walsh to do one long song, we'll play the shit out of it. No yeah. pun intended. <laughs> Did we hook it up? That smell was five and a half minutes long, man. That's interesting. <laughs> that explains oh, the success of the out the Outlaws song "Green Grass and High Tides" as well. Yes, you're perfect. Which obviously should have been called "Green Grass and or Brown Grass and, <laughs> and, and, and Shit Tides." Yep. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, uh, yeah. Let's get down into these comments here on YouTube for Joe Walsh's "Life's Been Good." First up, Brad from the Valley, Bradley Turnham. So I don't I wonder what this guy's real name is. He sounds cool. Uh, this is from week one week ago. It was not Pud Webster McKenzie alone in the web there. That was the dog from Stroh's. But to walk a mile in Tom's shoes, that was the thing with sandalless fungus on the toes, big boat, long row, Rick Kane on the shortboard. <laughs> Is that like is that like a Russian communication to a spy? This is what people have suggested before to us on Twitter. They're like, how many of these comments are disseminating Russian spy communication? And with that one, I'm like, mm, I don't know, man. That's all I can think. It yeah, that or like this kid got a hold of his computer, <laughs> or just Salvador Dali got, a hold, got a hold of the computer. <laughs> that's that's not a good comment. That I mean, I I find. All right, I'll review that comment. I'm going to give that one star because it I don't understand how it applies to the song at all. Uh, this one is The Red 7000 from two weeks oh, ago. I like those ones. Take your balls out and strut. I can, okay. okay, I'll give that two stars because I do. I mean, I can see how you, that could, this song could make you want to do that. I would give it three or four stars because it is just a, you know, I don't, I'm not going to do that, but. It's a funny image. You can also put that on like any song, right? Any right. post at all, actually. You could you, there could be a tourism post, of, actually an Irish tourism post. Yeah. You could put take your balls out, yeah. And strut. Come to and Dublin, they, take your balls out, like, and strut. Hell yeah, someone could say hell yeah about that, and it wouldn't mean anything. Uh, DPZ from one month ago. Let's get real. How many people have heard this song and realized they were foolishly feeling sorry for themselves? I did. The day my cheating ex-wife finally walked out the door for the last time. And there ain't nothing some great women find sexier than a hard-working single dad. I can't complain because I picked a bar stool and it left me looking like a fool. Oh my gosh. <laughs> why? So, this, is, this is the category of why are you saying this on YouTube? <laughs> that is... That's like... um, He's like trying to... He's He, he meant to submit that to like a... A music publisher. 
<laughs> like a country music publisher. But he accidentally <laughs> sent he, his wires got crossed and he put it up under that. <laughs> Either that or he was supposed to send like a letter to his AA guy or something. Like what is that? That yeah, that's oh. unnecessarily uh, intense. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Even Joe Wallace is like, take it easy. Hey, man, this is. I'm I know. recovered too, but that's a little bit of an overshare. <laughs> right, right, exactly. Uh, Jerry Stone from one month ago. Fuck COVID. It's a trick. Needle, rat, poison, printed pills so Russia and Iran can steal our lives and money. The devil always comes to steal and destroy. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Well, <laughs> I, love the way I think I have to explain all this. Like, well, uh, what do we think? What, what, what is this person's mindset? <laughs> oh man, that's um, that's another one that doesn't really apply to the song, as far as I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just uh, yeah. Those are, are there any ones that apply to the song? Uh, you know, maybe what do they say. Yeah, find there's one that says like at least like this song rocks or something. Oh yeah, well, there's <laughs> lots of those. Yeah, well, what's one that's like? I love Joe, man. He always had a good attitude. Well, this one, I mean, this one's very positive, but it's not about Joe okay. Walsh. Oh. Sonny Boy 14 from one month ago. Jeff Bezos, you the man. You the man. <laughs> so Sonny is, uh, you know, they, they always say to go against the tide. And boy, what a what a, uh, what a a stance he's taken there. Maybe he's just grateful for, he thinks that like Jeff Bezos runs YouTube. Or, right, right. Yeah, he's like, thank you for putting, I love this song, <laughs> Jeff Bezos. You're the best DJ. <laughs> this one references the lyrics because there's that line where he's like, I'll lock my door in case I'm attacked. Yeah. Uh, so all roads lead here from one month ago. I got big dogs in case I'm attacked. Woof, woof. <laughs> all right. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I'd like to inter that. Right, that's the only guy I'd like to interview. <laughs> I'd like to interview that guy. I'd yeah. Like, I really, yeah, I want to know about that. What does that mean? Is that supposed to be like, what dogs? Uh, yeah. <laughs> is, that, is that a sex thing? Is that he's trying to brag about it? Like, <laughs> no, I think he's just saying, like, Joe Walsh locks his doors and he's like, yeah, I lock I my doors and I got dogs. Fuck you. I don't need locks. I got dogs. Yeah, yeah. In your face, Joe Walsh from 1974. <laughs> uh,. Nomad Creations from three months ago. Best thing about being last to leave the party is you don't have awkward say goodbyes to everyone. They creatively do it for you. Sad face. <laughs> so I I love this is this I is think like Neil Hamburger wrote that. <laughs> this is like outstanding. I love this. He's the, the best thing about being last to leave the party is that people will ask you to leave. And so you don't have to take it upon yourself to say goodbye to people. <laughs> Which yeah. is I love it. That's kind of like a suicide note. <laughs> well, we might be getting one of those here in a minute too. Uh Andrew Chard from three months ago. Old bikers introduced me to this song, Steely Dan, and so much more. Which I'm gonna stop right there. The fact that bikers at one point were like, "Fucking Steely Dan yeah, is my that's shit." Inter- that's interesting to me too. I think he's confused. I think it makes sense. Like, have, I think you heard about Steely Dan from the bowling a- bowling alley pro shop guy. <laughs> <laughs> um, old bikers, bikers are like Steely Dan. <laughs> yeah, just a fucking guy on his hog, just you know, That's fucking bikers turn me on to fucking uh, Chick Korea. I don't. Right. Know. <laughs> I just imagine like a fucking sweaty, disgusting looking biker guy on his hog, just being like, "We've seen the last of Good King Richard." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's um. I am another gentleman loser. <laughs> That's an unusual <laughs> brand for a biker. <laughs> so they introduced this guy to Steely Dan and much more. Being a troubled teen was great in the 80s. I am the age they were then. I encourage everyone to try hallucination hallucinogens at least once, including my children. Wow. <laughs> Life without drugs and music would be extremely sad and pedestrian. Just wow, don't just pedestrian. don't get pedestrian. Just don't get on opiates or meth. <laughs> so, thanks, Dad. Who does he think's reading that, children? <laughs> I think he's saying that he's like, yeah, I let my children get fucked up in f- in front of me. It's awesome. And we listen to the Dan, man. We listen to Steely Dan just like a biker. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I I want to. Oh man, I, I want to interview a lot of these a lot of these people. <laughs> a documentary. Yeah, yeah. Perk, come back to me. <laughs> Yeah, like, and like the, the bikers are like, yeah, Steely Dan means it's actually you know the story of the name, right? Uh, oh yeah, it's, I mean, uh, it's I know a, what I'm saying. It's like the bikers like saying, oh yeah, yeah, yeah it's dirty. Yeah, you ever read William Burroughs? Yeah, name is <laughs> Dildo. <laughs> what kind of biker are you? <laughs> I really do think there is something to be said about the '70s, just being like people were just kind of into whatever was on the radio because it was the monoculture. So I, that's why it kind of makes sense to me where like some biker guys like, yeah, I mean, I fucking like, you know, Skinner and shit, but like, if Steely Dan's on the radio, it's on the fucking radio, man. Who gives a shit? Yeah, I like air supply. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you got to go back and do it again and it fucking sucks. Dan gets it. Um <laughs> Dan, like it's a person. Dan, <laughs> I, I, I have uh, my friend uh, Chandler. His dad referred to Steely Dan in my presence in earnestness uh, as the Dan. He was like, "Yeah, dude." I, he had a he had a folder on uh, on Chandler's computer that just said "Kick Ass Tunes." <laughs> And you'd click on it, and it was all, you know, all the stuff you'd expect a, a dad to be really into. And uh, we were talking about, I was like, I was like, oh, yeah, I saw your Kick-Ass Tunes folder. I was like, oh, man, we were, like, talking about different things. And I, and he goes, uh, he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I got the Dan in there, too, man. They're great. I was like, you call him the Dan? Did you say the damned? <laughs> no, I said the Dan. The Dan. Who's the Dan? <laughs> Steely uh, oh, Dan. Oh, Steely. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, but that's... <laughs> That's funny, the Dan. Uh, I was, I was thinking, I was making me think of something else that I can't remember. So go ahead. <laughs> uh, got, I got a few more here. Uh, and this person, uh, Shannon Teagarden, shout out, making her fifth appearance on this show. Uh, she was also on Bon Jovi's Wanted Dead or Alive, which no you were way. on as well. Uh, that's episode 115. She was on I Hate My Life by Theory of a Dead Man on episode 65. Buy Me a Boat on episode 124 and Kick It in the Sticks on episode 127. So she's in the Five Timers Club, just like Alec Baldwin on Don't SNL. Keep track of this shit? Uh, <laughs> well, because there's certain <laughs> people just come up and it's like a barometer. If I see that name, I'm like, oh, Shannon's in the mix. This is going to be crazy. Right, it means it's a fertile... Yeah, a yeah, thread. yeah. It's a canary in the coal mine okay. for insanity. Okay, You're like, good. okay. I like that. What's uh, your name again? Shannon Teagarden from That's five good, months ago. Good name. I think protecting us and can't even poop. What is ever seen silliness at this level? Hard Rupert. Hello, sleeping sir. How is it going? In harmony like no other now. Birds are singing, and then come in well. Lawrence Welk has the section, and I'm not playing, you know. <laughs> so Lawrence Welk has the section is definitely some kind of code. You know what I found out about Lawrence Welk? Because I was looking at things to do in in uh, North Dakota, which I didn't end up going to North Dakota just because uh -huh. it was slightly too far out of the fucking way, and really I wanted to go to see South Dakota, so I didn't go. But uh, Lawrence Welk's hometown is called Strasburg. And the weird thing about Lawrence Welk is that he speaks with a German accent, and it's because this was such an isolated German community oh, wow. in the middle of nowhere, and he spoke German until he was 15, And in, but he's American, you know? And the funny thing is this town has the Lawrence Welk farm homestead where he grew up, the mm -hmm. farm, uh, that is like a, it's a city landmark. Yeah. And then they've got like a separate like museum to him that was, I guess, paid for by his estate and stuff like that. But in his will, he gave all the money to the city to do with it what they will, but they were not allowed to spend a dime on his boyhood home. <laughs> They were like he was just and who I have, I don't know this for sure, but I have to be it was some I have to assume it was some sort of fuck you to his old man, where it's just like yeah you're not you that's know, what I would think yeah it's like you bad. can preserve whatever you want but fuck my house yeah yeah <laughs> so probably, probably some um yeah something he didn't like there his dad <laughs> took away his accordion or something <laughs> which I'm sure he tried to do imagine having that guy as a son I mean you'd be like <laughs> fucking holy fuck. <laughs> This kid is out of control. <laughs> Calls himself Lawrence Welk. That's what you named him. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he's got a suit on. He's like conducting a bunch of dolls up there. <laughs> fucking kid's a fucking wreck. <laughs> Uh, I sure would like to have this house preserved somehow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I got two more here. Okay. Uh, Aardvark is good from six months ago. This is the anthem of rock. It captures the very essence of rock and roll music. Phenomenal riff, 
superb drums, and just about perfect backing chorus. It's the number that is going to be played at my funeral, and that is not far away. <laughs> uh oh. Send someone to do a wellness check on Aardvark is Good. Aardvark is Good is one of those. He's, that's, I mean, that's an okay boomer type, type response you say to that. Like, what's a background chorus? I don't even know what that is. I play music. I have no idea what a background chorus is. I think is. that's just called a chorus. Yeah, I don't know what that is. Like, does he mean the. He must mean the background vocals. It, in the chorus? Yeah, but I don't even... Yeah, maybe so. I don't know. Maybe but I don't think more there's more than one person. i got to check with... Because there's no... I just recorded a new record, and there's no background choruses on it as far as I know, and I might have fucked up. <laughs> well, maybe we should do that. Well, I got the mics here. Let's I want to be record at Aardvark's funeral. <laughs> Fuck him. Aardvark, if you're still alive, get at us at the Goods Pod. I mean, if I got on that thing, I try, I'm always trying to give people pep talks, so I'd be like, come on, Aardvark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You you're got this, man. Soon. Come on. You got this. You got this. <laughs> This is about life. You got this life. You got it. <laughs> oh man. Uh, so this is uh, this is the last one that I've got here. Uh, Ron Allen from four months ago, 1988, Mustang GT, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. I was 18. Yes, I went there on vacation. Got put on probation. Went back on a violation. No shit. <laughs> Bars, bars, bars. Wow. <laughs> so <laughs> it's why I, I like wonder, doing. I, it sounds like he started that, like he didn't know he was. And then he was like, wait a minute, those two rhyme. And he decided, 100%. decided to do one more. He accidentally started. Yeah, he's, he's literally a poet and he doesn't know it. He fucking started. He just started rhyming. Uh, yeah, it's my favorite thing about doing like uh, you know older songs like this because you do get just you know misbegotten youth of, of of a different generation, which is fun. You know, newer songs tend to be like you know people in their twenties just being like you know I'm fucked up on oxy, I don't give a shit. Yeah, my, uh, my uncle, be, my uncle beat a raccoon to death with a <laughs> baseball bat while we were listening to this song. Good times. That was when rock and roll meant something. Oh shit. Sheepdog ninety eight out. <laughs> <laughs> and that is Joe Walsh, Life's Been Good, our jam of the day. And uh, this is where uh, the road forks. For those of you that are members of our Patreon, head over to patreon.com slash thegoodspod to hear me and Chris talk about Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. And for the One rest of, the of you... One of the best movies ever, <laughs> definitely. I'm going to watch it again just because I, I'm so glad I watched it. <laughs> Uh, and for the rest of you, uh, please enjoy uh, this. Chris, where can people find you on oh, the internet? You can find me at uh, every Tuesday night on Twitch. Uh, the channel is Cold Brew Got Me Like every Tuesday, 630 Pacific. You can follow me at The Crofton Show on Twitter or at The Crofton Show on Instagram. Hell yeah. Yeah, great follow. I uh, thoroughly enjoy Cold Brew Got Me Like every day. And then also the Twitch show has been fantastic. So definitely. It's getting there, you know. Yeah. So we've uh, had a couple of technical issues because everybody doing the show is I, over 100. <laughs> hey, man, that's okay. People know. People know what's up. You know, that's, that's, was, the, that's the great thing about trying to do, you know, technologically proactive things at the moment because literally everyone on the planet has had to deal with all this shit. And I think. Honestly, people have more respect, I think, for like creators and stuff in this time because everyone else is like, oh, yeah, Zoom fucks up for me constantly or whatever. So people know the struggle. Uh, so but the content is uh, is outstanding. Yeah, we're having some fun and I've done some solo streams. If the, if we've had trouble with the group stream, I've just done a couple. So you can find you can also you can go to Cold Brew Got Me Like on um, on uh, what do you call it? Uh, Spotify, too. Oh, or nice. Apple, what Apple Podcast, whatever it is. But it's yeah, Cold Brew got me like Perfect. all over the place. Go to my Patreon slash Chris Crofton. Give me all your canaries. Yeah, canaries are dollars, according to Jimmy Valiant. Oh, uh, perfect. The wrestler. So <laughs> Hell yeah. He used that. He called them canaries like on one wrestling show and he never said it again. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, do that and we will see you next.